All right. And welcome to the July 14th meeting of the County Commissioners. Please stand and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> turning Rich's face right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get that extra digit involved. Yeah, that third digit for a week or so. Yeah. Um, Typical for mid July. But yeah. let's look at the bright side. It's the fair. It's yeah. 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 We're getting it done hopefully in July. So we'll be here in August and September and All right. we'll enjoy a nice, good fall football season. Okay. Yeah. So, David, did you have comments? Hi, good morning, commissioners. I, yeah, I just wanted to uh, remind you that today's we're, we're finishing up the active violence training today uh, out at Susan B. Anthony. So um, it's going very well. Um, everybody's learning a lot. And uh, uh, just wanted to remind you that that's what's going on. And we'll be we'll be done today about four o'clock. All right. Thank you. Thank you. you have public comments? Sorry, commissioners. Okay. Well, I don't have a whole lot. <laughs> We've tried to catch up with all the uh, paperwork and all the budget information, that type of thing, which is quite a job and, and been doing a lot of physical therapy. So don't have a lot to, to say. Got to get back in, into all my meeting schedules. Yeah. So. Yeah, what a week. I'm tired today. Uh, it's just been boom, 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 boom. Um, Monday afternoon, I went to Topeka to meet with a doctor at Stormont Vale, went through a series of tests, got to stand up on that weight machine thingy that like tests everything at once. I don't know how it does. You just hold on to it, put your feet on it, and it tells you everything about yourself you already didn't know. So, yeah, so it went well, though. Um, everything's down, not just weight, but body comp, mass index, lost like 20 cents to my water retention. I didn't even know that was a thing, but you know, apparently so. Um, I walked away thinking, well, it must be good. So, okay. So I continue to work. We'll meet again next month. Also on Monday, I met with my nutritionist at Rethink via video conference, discussed a, kind of a new set of gold or an action plan, as we like to call it, to kind of better suit where I'm at right now and kind of help facilitate some things through the, through the summer and the fall. No big deal. Um, just what you got to do in the process. So. Um, all's good there. Um, Tuesday morning did uh, K Man's in focus program. Um, the full hour went well as it usually does. Somebody actually called in and it's very complimentary. I didn't quite know how to take that. So, um, I did bring a uh, new Riley County Historical Museum director, Kathleen Hinzer, with me. She spent most of the first half of the program updating everyone on what's happening at the museum, some revision and focus for the department in the museum. Learned a little bit on her uh, background that led to this point to begin with. Um, the rest of the hour was spent discussing, as you can probably imagine, the 2023 budget, um, the recent state Supreme Court on the dark store in Johnson County. I did my best to try to explain that from a legal scholarly perspective. Um, I actually thought I did pretty well. I don't know what I knew. So. You did fine. Okay. Oh, did you hear it? I actually did. Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah. So, I did my you best to kind of to correct you. I was worried. That was the one I was worried about. Somebody would call and I'd be like, uh, but no, yeah. actually, it worked out pretty well. So, and uh, discuss a little bit of our efforts on our infrastructural projects, including the North County EMS, public safety headquarters, various uh, other projects, and uh, put in a couple of plugs for the primary election as well. So, uh, all, all went well there. Tuesday afternoon, uh, later, I met with uh, MATP. TC President Jim Gannott and Harry Watts to continue to discuss and brainstorm ideas on how to fund their three-phased um, expansion on campus. And we've all seen that uh, presentation, so we're all fully aware of what that is. Project overall is going to take a lot of development, planning, community support, um, both their finance and some other uh, some other angles. Um, my thought at the moment is the state has a surplus right now. Um, probably should be going to them and asking for not all of it, but some of it, and we can use some of it to leverage other funds, other grants, other things along the way to get at least two of those, the first two of those three um, phases done. The last one is just kind of remodeling the current facility. So, you know, you want to get the big stuff done first. So, 
anyway, that was a good just conversation. Talked about some other stuff as well. Uh, Wednesday evening, I uh, met with a group of uh, constituents to discuss the budget we're working on currently, explain to discuss the complete <coughs> RR process. I don't know if I helped or hurt that one. So if you happen to get a call, Rich, I'll apologize in advance. Um, I just don't know what all that's going to look like on their end when they get it. You know, so I just can't really explain that at the moment, but kind of laid out the timeline. I said, this is probably when you expect that it is not a tax bill. It's just an informational item and it will list the dates um, when we're having those uh, particular hearings, however many of them we end up having. Um, then we discussed a little bit about elections, both the upcoming primary and the general elections, uh, what we're doing to make sure that they are safe and secure. Um, and then we talked about inflation, particularly on the rural side and the effect it's having. Um, not a bad conversation. It wasn't very, very civil, very down to earth, just lots of concerns that people have and um, don't mind talking about it as long as we can be good to each other in nature. So appreciated the time, the time spent. I actually got a few things out of that myself too. I uh, also spent some time last night watching a, a webinar from the National Association of Counties discussing how counties around the nation are using and securing their American Rescue Plan funds to meet some of their challenges and needs, both in the present and moving forward. There are a lot of interesting ideas out there. Um, and I guess when you have those type of funds that really don't have a lot of specific strings attached, you can do some of those things. So it's very interesting. And it looks, sounds like Kansas got some good news yesterday with the announcement of Panasonic, Panasonic coming in and building a multi-billion dollar electric battery facility and plant in DeSoto. Is that, I was trying to remember, is that south of Kansas City or yeah, really? between Kansas City and Warren. That's what I thought. Okay. So it's, the old, it's the old sunflower ammunition plant is where it's going. Oh, uh, like, okay. Sunflower ammunition plant. Oh, okay. I know exactly where that is now and that makes sense. Yeah, okay. because okay. I'd heard a whole bunch about it and then finally I heard one saying that's where it was. Because that made sense. I wondered why they were doing it. So yeah. that's what so they've been talking about it for the better part of, well, all of this year and a little bit of last year. So I, I put in quotations officially. <laughs> um, and it sounds like it's going to provide something like close to 4,000 jobs and about an um, average wage of 50 to 55,000. So pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. So and that's, um, that's all I've got this morning. All right. Well, uh, Tuesday morning, I attended the Flint Hills Veterans Coalition meeting. Uh, they awarded this scholarship for this year to a veteran. It's going to be going to MCC next year. And then they had just some preliminary talks about the parade. Then the uh, owners of Roberts Heating and Cooling were there to receive some recognition. They started a program last year with K-Man Radio called Hometown Heroes mm -hmm. that recognizes a local veteran each week. And then at the end of the year, they donated a new furnace and air to a veteran in need. That um, some they'd heard of somebody, one of the Flint Hills guys had heard about it and asked him, says somebody anybody recognize you for that? And they go, no. He says, yeah, you know, are you veterans? No. They said, just thought that something they needed to do. So they made up some nice certificates for them and everything. It was pretty nice to hear about all that. And uh Cheryl Collins used to attend these attended these meetings and that, and Catherine after. But in focus okay. came over and attended the, her first time meeting at the meeting. So Mike Kearns told her how a couple of times Cheryl in past parades dressed up in period costumes, followed the mounted color, color guard mm -hmm. with a broom and a scoop. Uh, no, I, didn't, I never saw that one. <laughs> and uh, I told Catherine she should have read the fine print before she signed uh -huh. it. Did he also uh, say anything to you, Commissioner, how a commissioner in a previous county attorney dressed up in tutus in a parade and walked down the parade? I make a motion. Two, two, male, two males. I make a motion that, that one. Like that. that one. <laughs> I'm working it, if you remember. I set up the barricades for the parade. Maybe I'll have COVID again. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm surprised Mike hasn't hit me for that one. I asked Mike how he looks in a tutu. Oh, that was my, oh, uh, oh. I was having a good morning. <laughs> oh. we'll and bring in uh, previous county attorney, uh, Phil Kennedy. Oh. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I did not have brought that up. I don't want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> And so, the visual's just not good. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, then after the meeting, I had someone come up and talk to me about our workers. 
and uh, first year, oh, and he said he lives out in University Park and he said they were out doing that uh, chip seal last week and he said he was so impressed how hard they were. He said those guys got in there and got done. They didn't waste time, you know, and just was impressed out. So I relayed that to John Elderman to make sure that that crew gets recognition. He said, you know, he knew they were coming out and he thought, oh, road's going to be messed up. They're going to be here messing. He said, they came in, went through and were gone. <laughs> Yeah, I and they do, I said, yeah, we do have some good crews. Mm -hmm. yeah, Alvin does a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, then Tuesday evening, I attended the Fire District Advisory Board Marathon meeting. Uh, yeah, they discussed the SOG update. They've got 45 sections done and 10 more to go. The software they use for reports has been bought out by a larger company in the new system costs about right at 10 times what the old one did. So they're uh, looking for other options. Big chief tablets, yeah. pencils. <laughs> um, they've got an, they've been emphasizing recruiting new volunteers. The emphasis started with, um, and they've gotten a little bit of a response. And then they just get, then they discussed the updates and repairs to the equipment and buildings, um, having problems <clears throat> with the fuel cards and working on changing some of that out. And uh, then they added countywide training events to the eligible for the stipends. And uh, but someone said they've had a, seen an article nationwide that stipends um, they were, had not been helping recruiting. They thought that would help recruit volunteers. And so far, it hasn't done much. But mm -hmm. they're trying to make sure everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. And then <clears> through <throat> the Firemen's Relief Association, they have life insurance for all the, all the volunteers. Mm -hmm. And it has a death benefit of 30,000, additional 30,000 for accidental, and another 30,000 if it's, on, if it's uh, related to the fire department. Mm -hmm. And they're looking to raise that because they've got some more extra money in that fund. They're going to open to raise those numbers to 50,000. It's also pointed out they need to use that for recruiting, try to, you know, it could be a ben good benefit to folks. Um, then uh, Wednesday afternoon, I went in and talked to John Ellerman about several items, including township roads, uh, new construction inspections, and the new building to work on. And that was it. Okay, first item of business, commissioners, need motion to approve two sets of first jaws of life extrication equipment uh, from the city of Newton Fire Department for a total of 25000 That come down in price? Well, it's supposed to go down in the, the the two new sets that we bought this year are six almost six for the two brand new sets. Oh, okay. That's that, not maybe what you're Yeah, that's okay. That's actually gonna be happy there for a second. Something yeah. came down in price for a change. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can go ahead and make a motion that. Um, we approve the purchase of the two sets of Hearst Jaws of Life uh, extrication equipment from the City of Newton Fire Department for a total of twenty-five thousand, with the funds uh, from the Capital Outlay District. I would second that. And moved and seconded to approve the purchase of the two sets of Jaws of Life uh, funding from the capital from the RFD Capital Outlay Fund. All in favor? Aye. 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 All three signs, please. Commissioner, do you have any items for the joint city county meeting? Yeah. So next, next Thursday. I don't know if we were getting an update from the Riverfront group or whatever, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. That's at noon, right? Or four. Yes, at the four. And any items for the intergovernmental luncheon? No. Yeah. Um, can we try to keep it till one o'clock? No. Yes. Oh, there, there is a way. Yeah. You just... okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to do that. We had a commission that used to do that. Producer <clears throat> was Adam. Times are times. Well, and I mean, I've got something else planned, so that's that's the only reason why I'm saying that. Yep. Uh, I need a motion to approve accounts payable and payroll, please. Make a motion to approve payroll and accounts payable. 
I would second that. We move and second to approve uh, <coughs> payroll and accounts payable. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All three sign, please. Commissioners have any changes for the minutes? No. I think I saw anything on that. Let me double check. A motion to approve. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we approve the minutes as written from the Raleigh County Commission meeting uh, July uh, 11, 2022. I would second that. And moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the July 11th meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That is one of the smallest changes we've made that, that I've really appreciated the most. <laughs> not going through it page by page? <laughs> when it's not necessary, yeah. Uh, review uh, any uh, changes to the tentative agenda or any questions. And any items for the press conference next Monday? Early voting has started, right? Let's it see. has. Okay. That's what I'm hitting over there for. Before we leave today, yeah, I'm going to do the same at some point in time. Yeah, it's full force. I was curious of one thing. Um, is any increase in voter registration? A lot recently. Yeah, a lot of staff, but matter of fact, we've got so many in the last minute staff are still updating the rolls because so many come in last minute. A lot of people checking on their voter registration too. It's, you know, the special questions, special questions in general, generally increased interest in any election. Mm -hmm. so definitely has. Uh, commissioners have a question regarding uh, Thursday, July 21st. Uh, the safety workshop to discuss transportation safety in Riley County at the uh, 6215 Tuttle Creek Boulevard uh, with KDOT and the public invited. Uh, need to know if two or more of you are planning on attending because if that's the case, I would recommend that we put it on as part of the agenda because there's if two of you are there, whether you discuss or not, it's a hard argument that it's not county business. So um, I was making plans on attending as long as our meeting didn't match up with it. Well, we would make this as part well, of okay. the I'm planning on it, yes. Thursday, July 21st, beginning at 1 p.m. Then we have the intergovernmental or no, city county at four. at four that day. I don't think it's going to last a good morning. Yeah, In the morning, that's going to make it a long day. But. Yeah, I'll give it a try. Okay, we'll add it to the agenda then. I have physical therapy after. I'm assuming that's downstairs in the conference room, probably. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. And then, commissioners. Uh, during budget discussions, all of you inquired about the auto lane agreement with Briggs. That's oh. a copy of the original agreement, just so you guys have it. This is actually last year for it, so oh, okay. Oh, it is. So oh, okay. Give you a little That's background right. history and information on it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've got that on file plans. I just thought you're interested. Oh, yeah. Easier than digging through for the file. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And then we have Mr. Holman at nine o'clock. Hi, Catherine. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Good. What what I heard you of uh, what little bit I heard you did very well on the radio yesterday. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Perfect. It's yesterday or two days ago. Yeah, I heard the whole thing and I thought you did wonderful. Thank you very much. It's nice to the be the person with you, though. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this, the second half, yeah, well, the second half didn't kind of give drag, me a soft kind of drag you down. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess I, I gauge it from the, the public's response and their callbacks. We didn't get any negative, yeah, uh, callbacks. So, <laughs> no, it's nice to have a chance to get out there and promote. <laughs> Yeah, uh, David always does a good job allowing us to do that. Good resource. How's Christian doing? I'm well, how are you guys? Good, 
just for that comment, you're coming with me in October. <laughs> October. Oh, gotcha. I was gonna say, what's, where are you going in October? I'm somewhere fun, I hope. <laughs> I'm I don't know much season. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be a good time for you to come in. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe we're already at media day for the Big 12 football. Yeah. Did you see for the hell one in the stadium? Is that what yeah. it was? I saw the picture of that. There's so many other good places in and around that area you could do that, but I don't know. They got to show off juries. I mean, that's 12 years old now. I mean, you know, it's, it's, there's newer stadiums. <laughs> I'm going to be curious to see where all this realignment shakeout ends up. Sounds thing. like the new guy's aggressive for the Big 12. Thankfully. Um, I think we're going to be okay. I think what you're going to end up with is probably three big conferences. Which, conferences get to 18 and 20. It's not a conference. It's no. just a, it's a league. <laughs> it's a league. It's, it's like, a league. That's what Herb Street said. You know, it's a league. It's a league. Yeah. Off, off the NFL. Yeah. Three leagues. And... Although you know, he was, there were a lot of people who lived to an east, west, and a central, but they're all getting teams from everywhere so now. <laughs> yeah, it of, would have to be a major realignment. Yeah, they're going to do something uh, now. I mean, the Big Ten, I mean, you know, they're going Los the Angeles to New York. York. Yeah. I mean, no, no, that's what I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, the conference is, I think, 10 looks good. You got nine football games, 18 basketball, before, you know, and just instead of having two a bunch of big ones, have seven. Smaller ones. And change but, change is but, inevitable, but you know the rivalries and stuff, all that goes away. You know, the yeah. one game that I still miss the most Nebraska. was the annual Nebraska Colorado game on Thanksgiving oh. weekend. You know, it was always that weekend, and I always look forward to it. And neither one of the teams I particularly liked, but it was a tradition. Yeah, and all those traditions are gone. I mean, kind of wonder what a an Alabama Oklahoma game is going to look like, or Texas and Alabama, or I don't, I don't, I don't know, Ohio State and USC or something like that every year now. You know, I mean, could create new ones, but it takes the novelty off those games that came up so infrequently mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. But like I said, there will be something else, and change is inevitable. Change is constant, but. Doesn't mean I have to like it. Yeah. Texas and Texas A&M game—that's good. <laughs> you know, there's Alaska. a couple of years. You know that that, that game there's got there's downright there. nasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe two years back in the mid '90s when we played Cincinnati home in a way, you know, those, are, those are two pretty good games. I mean, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I mean, I know we're West Nebraska a lot, but it's well, you know, it's the next closest school to Kansas for us. You know, and really, you know, the Missouri KU rivalry is. Yeah. Really, what it used to be. Either. I'm glad Missouri, to see that we're. I don't know who Missouri has for a rival now because they get thrown in the East Division. They they don't have a close game. If you, um, I, I still can't see bro. Illinois is in the non-conference. Yeah. Um, in conference, I still think they're trying to figure that out. You know, yeah. Did you? Uh, no, I don't know if you saw. Well, you know, was Facebook stuff, but uh, Anita Cook, son Cody, yes. got on with Tennessee. Yeah, that's a wide receivers coach. who did see that. 
real stud wide receiver from Hutch that he was taking around to various teams. And he actually picked Alabama, the wide receiver did. But uh, the coaches, when he took his receiver to Tennessee, were just impressed with how he coached and said he coached a lot like they did as they were coaching him through running those drills and stuff. And so they said, whether he comes or not, you got a position. It's just what kind of position we can offer you based on if he comes here or not. But it can't look like that's the reason you know, a lot of fun. Yeah, I heard quickly that much as my wife my wife knows Jim's folks. Yeah, I remember you saying that. She still calls him Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's probably that. <laughs> I've seen Cody at the gym. Popped in at the gym every now and again. <clears throat> good, good guy. Good guy. Yeah, a lot of people hoping he'd come back here. Yeah, it's a good work out. It's tough business. I think we've had that conversation before in coaching. It's just kind of luck of the draw, you know, and just finding the right fit and either it works and move on. Son-in-law's in, you know. Sure. And move around. I can tell you one of Jam's cousin's kids for husband's coach. He's not holding his job very long. He's moving every two years. I said that's the way it works. He's kept the right one. And he finally ended up being in New England. Did he? Bouncer in college for a while, we had headed to the pros in Minnesota and St. Louis, then he got a New England <clears throat> with them, and now he's at Kansas City, which obviously for the mom, you know, <laughs> likes it that they're oh no doubt. You know, I wonder how many more and all the way around now they're several years that she gets to see the grandkids all the time. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. I wonder how many more years Andy Reid's going to stay after it. Coaching for almost 25 years. How old is he? He's, he's not as old no, as No, he's not as old as yet. Low, low 60s. Yeah, mid, low mid 60s. That's a long time because he has an offensive mind. Yeah. He's a true a rough family life. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. For sure. So he's 64. Okay. A little younger than I guess. That's what I think. Somebody was talking about it, I don't know, two months ago. I said something about it. I thought he'd be close to retirement. And we looked it up and I thought, no, oh, he's not as old as. It seemed like he, because like I say, he seemed like he's been coaching forever. Yes, yeah, <laughs> since the late 90s. Yeah. In fact, you know, when he went to coach for the Eagles, the other person that the Eagles were considering for head coach. Hmm. Bill Snyder. <laughs> oh, name came up anyway. Yeah, I, I don't think he ever took it serious, but yeah, but the name came up. Yeah, a couple of times he didn't have an interest. No, didn't have an interest nowhere else. I think he knew probably his style and his way he went about things probably wouldn't work at the NFL yeah. level. Yeah, yeah. I just always Perfect liked here. his message early on, you know, because he would get polluted by various schools. And he always said, I can get to where I want to get from here. <laughs> Darn near made it there a couple times. I in St. Louis. Yeah. I'm one of the biggest stake in the hearts ever. <laughs> Thank you.
Good morning, Commissioner. Clancy Holt, Early County Counselor. The sole item I have before you today is an indemnification and hold harmless agreement. Just as a little background, uh, a few years ago, when uh, previously, until I don't know what year it started, but uh, beer sales, sales were not allowed during the Caw Valley Rodeo at the Riley County Fair. Uh, just had not come up as an issue, I guess. And then uh, I think what drove it, as I understand it, from what some of the Caw Valley Rodeo Association members have said, it started to have a little bit of difficulty attracting uh, rodeo talent to the fair during that time. There's a bunch of other competing rodeos uh, in the vicinity. And the one of the things, oddly enough, that was drawing people, contestants away and it was not necessarily just prize money or what have you, but it was also the fact that uh, the crowds weren't as large. And part of the reason the crowds weren't as large uh, was that the, uh, their perspective was that beer sales were not allowed uh, during, the, during the rodeo. So uh, after much discussion, a lot of input from extension folks, from the public generally, and from the rodeo association, others in the community, the commission you know, wrestled with it for a little bit and finally decided that they would do it, but they would have some restrictions on it. And that's what this is all about, really. Uh, there has to be uh, beer sales are only in the arena of the rodeo. Uh, they have to be consumed there. They're not to be taken outside the rodeo arena. And they do really, you've seen at the rodeo, they do a really good job of policing that. Uh, and whatever vendor is selected by the fair board, the fair board, first of all, has to approve it each year and that it's going to be done. Uh, and they select the vendor, and then that vendor has to, by signing off on this agreement, which the vendor this year has, as they always have, uh, since this was available, uh, to place on their own liability policy uh, all the entities that are involved in this. And that includes this board, members of the board, Caw Valley Rodeo Association, Extension, uh, and that's why the the wordiness of the indemnity provisions in there. It's designed to be as broad as possible. And they have to establish, they have to provide a certificate of insurance, the vendor does, showing that those, that, that policy is in place during each night of the rodeo. This year, the <coughs> commercial will be the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd during the fair. And that has been done. The certificate's been provided. It does show that the insurance, that the liability policy is in place. All the other parties have signed this. I'd uh, be glad to answer any questions you've got about it. If you don't have any, then when you're ready, I would just ask that you go ahead and sign it and get it in place. Of course. Now, wasn't this last year we had some problems getting it done? Oh, there's usually they, they didn't get it. I mean, it wasn't a problem, it's just they didn't ever get around. Well, it just every year. I, I always think I'm going to get started earlier on getting it because it, usually the hold up for one reason or another, not because anybody's trying to hold. Very often, the insurance companies don't understand, okay, we're approaching an event, we've had all these conversations, we're ready, now we need the certificate to say this. And then in years past, sometimes I've been given a certificate that's kind of close to what this says, but it doesn't say what. And so we exchange emails and, you know, it gets done. Uh, I have no doubt it'll happen next year. You know? Not because anybody's trying to do it, but. Just, uh, just so many people involved. Well, in the enough, company. It's, it's really the, the slowdown really occurs when you get to the point it really does to get the insurance company, the liability insurance company that's involved to provide it's a certificate exactly that has the right language yeah. and the policy and make sure the policy actually says what it needs to say to provide that coverage. I, I have no reason to believe that's going to change. So we'll see. So it <clears throat> isn't, Scott, excuse me, isn't this within like a enclosed area in mm -hmm. it the is. arena itself? It is, absolutely. Okay. Good point. And that's that's what they do a good job of policing each year. Okay. Uh, not by the police, by mm -hmm. the vendor and the people associated with Cobb Valley Road Association. Uh, you'd have to be pretty clever to, to exit the property with. One of those beers. I'm not okay. saying it's never happened, but if anybody were walking around the fair with it, then I'm sure they did that be uh, informed, corrected people that that yeah. wasn't appropriate. They needed to go back and read that or throw it away or whatever. Yeah. It never been 
we've never heard of any problems created by it nope. since implementation, but the commissioners originally had a lot of hesitancy and questions. And yeah. Which is understandable given the really. primary purpose of the, of the day through extensions. We talked about it a lot last year. Too. Mm -hmm. I tend to think it is a rodeo. It kind of falls hand in hand. <laughs> Well, it's kind but of the fact that they do a good job policing it and exactly yeah, yeah, it, yeah. the history of it shows it, it yeah. works pretty well. I'm not, I'm not concerned. Right, about yeah, it. we had problems right. yeah. every year. Then it'd be, a, and that's always it's always it's every commission's option. It's nothing that you have to do. But yeah. I've never heard of any. I haven't really seen anything while being out there. I, I just don't. And it's usually plenty warm. Oh yeah. It sounds like it's gonna be this year too. <laughs> it always Man. is. Right. Not the weather I'd want to sit outside and drink beer in, but that's just me. <laughs> but, it's important uh, to be on the right side of the arena too. <laughs> oh, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you go. So, not for the beer, for the sun. <laughs> the same time with those early K State football games. Yeah. <laughs> As you can tell, experienced attendees. If you people are always wonder, you see a very sparse crowd over there that's going to get a lot of the sunlight. I bet they haven't been here before. Right. So. <laughs> I've, I've burnt my head on that in those <laughs> times. A few times. I'm glad I sit on the other side. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, I don't have a problem with this this year. Uh, so I would make a motion for the board to sign the agreements as presented. I'll we'll second. Been moved and seconded to sign the agreements uh, as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All three signed, please. It's that time of the year again, too, the fair. You know what that means. 100 degree weather. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Food. Cookies. Food. Cookies. Cookies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cookies. <Yes. laughs> this year, the contest <laughs> isn't high. This year, it's cinnamon rolls. Oh. If it was 100 degrees, it makes some chilly, but yeah. <laughs> so I don't know about this year. I don't know about that. The traditional wisdom is, as always, if you're going to participate in the judging uh, ties, make sure that the, or the, or any kind of competition, make sure it's not one that you ever want to eat again. <laughs> well, it's probably better than hot dogs, I suppose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finally, this year for the first time, got enough gooseberries from my gooseberry bush. Yeah. Oh, so. I've never had gooseberry. Nice. Nice. I've never had gooseberry. I'm still lagging for mid choir. I didn't spend a room on Some people like the room. Like so my yeah, wife and daughter makes a tremendous rhubarb strawberry pie. I guarantee you, like, it's amazing. That, that, that I've never yeah. had. He keeps saying it's, it's the good. best in the world. It is terrific. But I Dan, keep waiting for him to saying. bring us one to try. I, that was my <laughs> thought too. If you bring it, I will try it. I can find one. I'll bring it. It's tough to find. Uh, I've always yeah. thought. You still will see like the, the jars of the uh, <laughs> at the stores. You will see jars of mincemeat. Yeah. It's raisins and raisins and, and usually some of element of fat. You know. I like raisins. I like raisins. It sounds horrible, but it, it does good. sound horrible. I would it agree. <laughs> they used to do that. My family used to, they used to make a big thing out of it, especially at Christmas time. Did they have a starter that they used? A what? A starter? Because you uh, probably. So I don't the, remember. That's the part that really puts me off. I didn't just think of it. It's not like they didn't talk recipe. about fruitcake, you know, this thing's <laughs> called starter. But I'll just say what. Exactly. <laughs> my wife, her. Uh, mother uh had a, a previous husband and that guy could make the best fruit cake in the world it was amazing really i mean it sounds like something that could be good but oh it was i didn't have to taste it, 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 it one until then mm -hmm. it was amazing i'm one of those who likes fruit cake i think it's good i knew there, there must be somebody in the world yeah. i didn't know who it was but yeah. i mean somebody that's just part of that old theory there's really only one and that's no, the same one keeps... that people send at christmas time it's the same same one. Let's see. I'm sitting here doing mine this much. How's that doing? It's, it's still. 
No, it's down a little bit. Okay. Not, like I said, I had to follow up this week. It's not moving so, well, so much swelling in there. It says it could take, it can take a week or two to sit there. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's why I can't, can't quite bend it down all the way. Kind of swells, yeah. Kind of self is still working. I keep thinking. Oh, I keep forgetting it you know, because it's feeling pretty good. Oh. But I'll reach down to that step of the kick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where it is with my knee, I'll see about a bang. Mine's more healed. That's one of my greatest superpowers. Finding some cook or cranny of the wall or ch the chair sitting down and just running my foot right into it. Oh, yeah. I'm a fly. It's I, always the pinky yeah, toe, too. It's not oh. the big toe that can sustain it. It's the <laughs> pinky toe. It, it's a good aim to get that hit. That oh, I know. Too, that and I do it <laughs> perfect every time. Like I look down like I broke it. I know I had to broke it. I probably had and don't realize it. Well, it's black and blue. Probably. I've done that a few times, yeah. <laughs> and you know what they do for black for a broken toe? Mm -hmm. the same yeah. thing they do with turf toe. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. You can tape, them. You can tape it to the next one. Yeah. yeah. Nothing really. That's how they come up with the three little piggies on the toes. It oh. <laughs> makes sense now. That's what I was looking for. Noon on the Monday before the election, right? Okay, I got it right. State law. And I know more than I think I do sometimes. That's a scary thought. Broken that Saturday for me. Right. Which is not required. We're here working, getting ready for the election, so we always have done that. Just bring in the advanced crew. Mm. Well, in primary, I mean, it's been kind of interesting leading up to it. You don't see a lot of you know, inter party candidate signs and information. No, and stuff. I've seen one on my drive, you know, on the way into town. And I'm like, I didn't see any of those candidates campaigning or ads or anything. Like, I started getting stuff in the mail. You've been getting. Well, I don't know if I have or not. What my wife gets uh, the mail and I've gotten a few things. He gets dumped before you say, yeah, because he just come in. Oh. Yeah, I don't. I've got, well, a couple, a couple mailers. I've yeah. got a couple of mailers of the Secretary of State's race. And oh, I've, 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 got, I've, I've, got, I've got, well, no, I have gotten some yeah, stuff. It was a state. But also I've got the state representatives. You know, there's three Republicans running yeah. for Clay and uh -huh. North Carolina. I noticed one sign out there on Eureka Drive. And I guess I guess in the remap, I thought that was still the 66th over there. And apparently it turned to the 68th. Now. Oh, I there's, got some there's two. There's two. I still haven't seen a map. That's not we saying. just got them completed yesterday. Our PIS did for Riley County. Oh. Did they really? Mm -hmm. It should be out there now. Like on our website or on the state's on website? Ours, okay. On ours. I just saw the final revision yesterday. On the and that's for the yeah, state. Kind of the state it wasn't blown. You couldn't blow it up yeah. enough to see. Yeah. But like that district, I can't put her, whatever it is that, that Carlson's on. Now. 64th. Yeah. Used to be just Clay County and a lot of North Riley County. Well, now it's all of County. They took some uh, Dodson's mm -hmm. history. It, it took it went into um, what's the next one? Cloud County, clear over to Concordia, mm -hmm. and, a, and a couple of townships south of there too. Mm -hmm. Well, I know over here, you know, my district over here north, you got split. It used to be full sixty six, and now there's a sliver of. I, I'm 63rd or something. A very small sliver there, the very north end, and then the 51st comes and part of the much cuts it in half. So, okay. And I guess on the western side, 68th, we moved into Riley County too, taking over the Ogden area, and oh. I guess um, Eureka Valley over there, Scenic Drive area, I guess. I have to see the map, see where the line is. Yeah, so that's what <clears throat> We, we've got even more. We have even more reps in yeah. our county now. Yeah. <laughs> They're all got so on the south part. They've all got a whole bunch of little corners. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, it's, I've seen a yard sign in one of those houses just north of the airport there in Eureka, and I thought, who's that? I don't know who that is. <laughs> we thought about changing our delegation. And man, you don't throw the ballots out, so there are some unique names on the ballots anymore. I'm like, when they come up with those names. Mm -hmm. That makes the picture fun and quadruple multiple time checking for errors. <laughs> Name spelling correct city. We must have went through it pretty well because you know I got the candidates list, I think, a little earlier than I typically do in the mail. Yeah, it'll, no, everything was just pushed because, mm -hmm. you know, all the redistricting got done so late. Yeah, staff, yeah. you'd just I'm be sure amazed that. at the hour staff been putting in. I've got election staff at seven stay over Tuesday. Everyone get here at seven or 7.30. You know, Lori working on taxes yeah. because we were down one person in the end lab. She's been working overtime last two weeks. We're just, workload is huge. Yeah, that's right 64th one. That's going to be interesting. Two challengers. There's three on the Republican side there, isn't there? Yeah. No, two, two, two challengers. challengers. Oh, two okay. Challengers. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm just doing the full math. Sorry. Which I'd say Carlson is on Clay. Now we've got one person from Riley County mm -hmm. and one running from Clay County. Was it the so former mm -hmm. superintendent? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I met the other. That's right. He just retired this year, though. Did he? Yeah. 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 Hadn't he heard. retired this year. Yeah. Then the other gentleman that's running, I did actually meet, but Bloom. Yeah. Just a, just a farm guy that's concerned. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of Blooms and Clay King. Yeah. I guess the next thing up is redistricting our areas. Oh, is it? Oh. Um, not real soon, but it will be this fall, I'm sure. Oh. After general, probably. Well, and you had said there wasn't that much difference. You know. It's not horrible. And you're not required to change it, just consider it also. But if it's, and there's no written law on, you know, how big the variance should be, it's. Oh, no, there isn't. And I said that was only about it. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd be digging through all that. And I guess the states and even the local municipalities have a one challenge, legal challenge or something to the 20, 20 census now or something you can make. Oh, really? Mm -hmm.
All right, Catherine. Go ahead. Commissioners, mm -hmm. Catherine Hensler, museum director. Um, this morning, I am bringing to you a request for review and approval of a materials release and filming agreement from a production company called Most of the Time LLC. Um, this company, Most of the Time LLC, is a television production company who approached a museum in the spring of 2022 concerning the inclusion of museum assets which could include collections, building, and grounds in their upcoming production of a popular television series. They presented two release documents to us for a consideration. Again, that's a materials release and a filming agreement. These documents were shared with council for review and also shared with the Riley County Historical Society. Uh, the Society Executive Committee uh, has already approved their version. Um, they did that on June 28th of this year. The Kansas Historical Society is also involved as, as you know, the Good Know House is part of their property. And so if filming takes place on the museum grounds, that is likely to be included, uh, as well as after reviewing the script, we do wish to include a photograph of Isaac Goodnow. And the photograph that we have at the museum is property of the Kansas Historical Society. So they too have also received their own um, <clears throat> materials release and um, have taken care of that. And so today we're presenting these releases to you. So it's it's nice when we get to come to you with fun, exciting projects, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the terms of the release are outlined in the attached documents. Um, and then just to provide a little bit of clarity, the reason we have so many releases along with this project is we have so many partners. So um, of course, the county owns the museum building and the signage and the name. Um, and then the historical society, which is the private entity, owns the collection, the exhibits, and um, that intellectual material, uh, as well as some of the ancillary sites that uh, we operate. These agreements pertain only to the museum building, the sign, and the name. We don't predict any uh, negative fiscal impact. In fact, um, the uh, actually all of the work that the staff will be doing with the producers will be salaried staff. So we won't be bringing in our hourly staff uh, to, to assist with this. So we have already um, from the society side, we've already assisted them with research and gathering some materials and providing photography. <coughs> Um, if and when filming takes place, it'll be only salaried staff that will coordinate with them. And so uh, I would like to ask for your um, hopefully approval of these documents, and that would allow us to move forward with um, the rest of this project. Are there any questions I could answer? Oh. I have one. <clears throat> Will they be doing this in the meantime during our during our normal operation hours where we have to close the building? They haven't provided that information yet. They've just given us a time frame, so it'll be late summer. Uh, we don't know days, but we can certainly work with them um, to make sure it does not interfere with visitors, um, regular business operations. And again, like I said, it'll be our salaried staff. So if they do need to come in after hours, it'll only be that salaried staff who will be paying extra hourly to be here. All right, I was just curious. <laughs> I would actually assume that's probably the way they would probably approach it. That would be the, yeah. yeah. Likely. Yeah. Yes. I think that the fewer distractions for all parties, the <laughs> better, better. And, and yeah. we will attempt to work with them. On gotcha. That. If there are any further questions, um, thank you for considering this request. We need to make a formal yeah. motion, so I'll we go ahead and make a motion to allow the production team to access the county museum's assets listed above and inclusion of the museum footage in the series. The releases uh, will need to be approved and signed. I would second that. We moved and seconded to approve and sign the uh, releases for the production. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chairman, sign please. Next question, we have Shiloh Baker at 930. Morning, Shiloh. Morning. 
sprinkling rain and doing anything? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Still a chance. Okay. It's nice. It's not, it feels kind of good out there. Right yeah. Now. Does it? Last couple of mornings have been nice. That's going to change next oh, week. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Was it like a day or two ago? They said a cold front went through and it's wet. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's heading south. Where was it? Yeah, about 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was a cold breeze that came cold through. If you missed it, you blinked, missed you missed it. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. Okay. Oh. I'm charging. I like I like seeing your post over the weekend. Oh yeah! Congrats. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. That's a huge milestone. A huge, yes. Um, long time forthcoming. Yeah. Um, I went to see the doctor on Monday, and all the other things that go with it—the BMI, the um, all the other comp numbers and stuff—have come way, way down too. Oh, sure. like, <laughs> we'll keep it up. We are. We definitely are. Yeah, I can it's make I, mean, I worked this spring or over the winter, start of the year, worked like crazy just to lose 15. I can't imagine keeping it up to help. It comes in waves, it's peaks and valleys. You know, you get you get to a point where you make some changes and all of a sudden a whole bunch will come off. You're like, all right, this is good. And then you hit that period where it just, off. yeah, I just you get nowhere, and that's where everybody usually quits. And I yeah. just after losing the first like 30 to 50, I'm just like, man, I've lost, I can't gain all that back. I just can't, can't let that effort go to waste. So I just, that's, that's been my motivation. So too. yeah, <laughs> I, think, I said, I think I've lost a hundred pounds just over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's bad that I got yeah. to that point where I had to do it and better that we got it done. So not going to do it again. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, I just wanted to acknowledge. Thank you. I appreciate that. From, from the looks of that post, a lot of other people acknowledged it too. <laughs> kind of like over 500 likes or something no. on that. There's no fight. It was on there. I'd like to see it. Yeah. <laughs> All the more reason to get on there, Rich. <laughs> I bet if Fritz got on social I mean, media, he would just love it. Die not having a Facebook <laughs> or any other social media post. I think you need to do a TikTok. That's what you need to do. <laughs> I, could I could just do. see. I could just see that. that Short do. little blurbs there. Yeah. Old Rich Fargo. Some of my extracurricular activities. Yeah. Working out in the yard, standing up on the roof. Up on the mountain. 
Yeah, climbing, maybe watch the football game. We can get with Vivian on that and get, get to work on that. <laughs> About that in the office There's over there. People make some money off that maybe be my retirement gig. See, there you go. <laughs> you could be a TikTok model. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok person. I'll know about the model. Great <laughs> aspiration. <laughs> Okay, now my cheeks hurt. <laughs> so hard, I don't know how you're going to top that this morning, Shiloh, but please. I've <laughs> never seen TikTok. I hear it, but I don't even want to know what it is. Well, that's but we all hear it. Whether like we're on tutu. social media or not, we all hear it. Kind of like the tutu thing. I was just oh, and speaking of. <laughs> speaking of Shiloh, let's get back to business. <laughs> don't listen to no. this. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a pro I've got a project we need to talk about later. <laughs> well, on that note, good morning, commissioners. That went south fast. Shiloh Hager with the um, Riley County Treasurer with the June <coughs> revenue numbers for you. Can you believe we are halfway through the year? It's just I don't know where it's all gone. Mm -hmm. So we um, ended the month of June with a balance in the general fund of $28,750,235.07. And when I compared that to the same time frame in June of 2021, we had $24,538,245.75. So we're up just over $4.2 million in the general fund as of the end of June. Our total fund balance is $75,873,618.58, which is up just um, $13.5 million compared to 2021, but that does include just over $14 million of ARPA money, so I just want you to keep that in mind as well. Our year-to-date investments in our investment income is 138,650.26 as of the end of June. And we currently have $16,101.96 of interest that has accrued on the ARPA money that we have sitting, um, that we have in the bank right now. Um, the interest rate that our um, money earned in the active checking account for June was 1.43%. And I did um, have some, I did invest some funds um, in June and we did on one of the investments, um, I actually, for the first time, used the municipal investment pool mm -hmm. because their rate was 2.77%. Um, and so I put some money in there this for the month, of, in the month of June. And um, I also put some in there for the month of July. Um, just because their rate is was yeah. um, quite a bit um, over what we were getting on CD bits. So probably, probably making more in a month than we did the total year last year. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> last year it was 0 0.0 mm. numbers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it's nice to see that um, those those amounts going up. The June revenue um, at the end of the month in the general fund was 620,208.15, which is 74.5% um, over what was actually budgeted for the month. And year to date, we are 5.50% over um, the budgeted amounts um, in the general fund. Um, you can see sales tax um, was up quite a bit from um, we also got um, our payment in lieu of tax um, in June, and so those are some of the some of the contributing. Um, also, investment interest. We had budgeted. We didn't know what those were going to be for this calendar year, so we had budgeted pretty a pretty small amount. So that's significantly higher than what we had budgeted. And if you look at our at our percentages um, for the year to for the total year, we've collected eighty nine point three two percent of budgeted revenues for um, calendar year twenty twenty two. 
Okay, sales tax. Once again, sales tax was up higher than it was at this time last year. As you can see, we are sitting right now and we've a total, the total amount of sales tax that has been deposited into the sales tax funds are 2,169,175.84, which represents 63.8% um, of the total amount budgeted. So through June, we are 13.8% over budget. Um, you can see here that we um, were 10.38% over for what we had at this time last year and 37.33% higher than what we had budgeted for the month. Historically, you can see here that we are still doing an upward trend. We 12.8% um, year to date higher than at this time um, last year. And when you look here, June um, of 22 is 14.56% higher than what June of 2021 was. Here are, is some of the, the detail as to the various um, categories. And your, um, the comparison from sales and use tax, you can see here for the month of June, um, use tax is up 33.87% compared to June of 2021. And um, here's the breakdown of sales tax is 11.09% higher. And then you can see the grand total compare. Any questions about any of the revenues? You gotta think that the, a lot of the sales tax increase is just sales tax on inflation. inflation. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, so, but the use tax, that's the online, or mm -hmm. that's strictly just the online? Online are things that have, that are purchased um, outside mm -hmm. of the county that are delivered into the county. Oh. Well, that's quite a bit of a fluctuation through that through the year so mm -hmm. far. It's from 82 to 33 to a little under a percent the month, two months before. Okay. So, so a few things just going on in the treasurer's office. I um, just want to uh, remind the public that um, vehicle tags with the last name J, K, and L are due by the end of July, July 29th. Um, I worked, I assisted with the tax sale on July 8th, which was um, another successful sale. Um, all but two properties sold. And I'm currently in the process of working up the analysis as to where we are. Um, we have a lot of refunds because there were quite a few properties that sold for more than taxes, interest, and costs. Oh, really? So yeah, so that was, oh, that was yeah. really good. We always yeah. like to see that. Um, pardon? No, I'm just talking to my brother. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, like I told you, I attended the um, KCTA Spring Conference in Hayes um, at the earlier in June. Um, we had classes on situational leadership. We had some roundtable discussions with other counties that have this. We broke up into groups with this, uh, the same vendor, software vendors. So we kind of just passed some ideas and um, and. Uh, had some a class on the county budget process, which is always very interesting. Um, cybersecurity, and um, we also had a very interesting presentation from the Kiowa County Emergency Management. Talked about the the tornado. Um, oh, the Greensburg. The Greensburg tornado. tornado and and unanticipated costs that oh, go gosh. along with those types of um, disasters. So when you look at that, it's just yeah. very interesting to see. You know, and and to look where they are now, how that rebuilding takes place. So, and then probably one of my favorite classes we took was stress relief through meditation. So now I know how to stay calm. <laughs> um, next week I will be um, at the National Association of County County Collectors, Treasurers, and Finance Officers, or NACFO, um, for their in 
that annual conference. Um, we'll have two and a half days of certification classes, and then I will be sworn in for a second term as the NACPO treasurer. Okay, congratulations. So, thank you, thank you. And uh, so other than that, it's been a great month. Well, you forgot the most important one. What? Well, didn't you win the Betty McBride Award for oh, the state? Well, yeah, but you know? I'm not gonna do my own award. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and do so then. Very congratulations, because thank you. I can't think of anybody, and I'm being biased, that's more deserving. Thank so, you. Yeah, I was. It was. It's an honor to to receive that award. I think so. you're one of only two, right, in Raleigh County, to ever won it. I I know Eileen won it. I don't yeah. know prior, but I don't know if it was even. I don't know how long ago that long award was. Yeah, been in place. I did not know. Okay, but so now I have a goal to to go win it at the national level. Okay, like good. So, someday. Good, 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 good. I like that. I like that. But thank you. I I appreciate that. Is there anything else I can provide for for you all for next month or in the future? Just keep plugging away. Keep plugging away. Yeah. All right. As you said, the year's halfway over, so we got yep. half a year to go. Definitely. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Shiloh. Thank you, Next commissioners, you yeah, have the chamber at Oh, there he is. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Good. Good to see you. Like that's a yeah. How you doing? Good to see you. Right. More chairs. Excuse me. More chairs. Mm -hmm. Ten chairs. Just yeah, I think there. they're just spread out a little bit more forward this time. Oh, wonderfully color coded. Yes. <laughs> Oh, hi, how are you? We'll do it formally up here, but I want to oh, do it in. Okay.
All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, Darren Solden, Director of Economic Development for Manhattan Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for having us here for our, for our monthly update. Um, a couple of, a couple <laughs> items to cover here. I'm going to start off with um, uh, the uh, Early Economic Development Committee for the county. We're meeting again next week, and uh, I am the, uh, the part of the program for that. So we're going to be talking some about um, uh, economic development efforts and uh, specifically uh, small business resources uh, that are available and uh, um, is available here, but kind of take a look at some other things that maybe other places in the state are doing and other communities are doing and, and talk a little bit about how we can better uh, leverage. Uh, ultimately, I mean, I don't, don't fully direct that conversation, but I think ultimately what we can, what we can do to better package and, and use the existing resources we have and make sure that we're better job of promoting those out into the, in all parts of the county. Um, and, uh, and then if there are some gaps there that folks feel we need to explore, take a look at take a look at some other potential resources. But look forward to that discussion. And again, appreciate the appreciate involving the involving the chamber <coughs> and myself in those conversations. I think I think we're going to be able to make some good make some good progress there. Um, next up, the big economic development news in the state. Uh, you probably saw last night, uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, the Panasonic announcement. Uh, for the project over in DeSoto, uh, the announcement uh, at the uh, in Topeka yesterday. Obviously, that that Apex project and all the Apex legislation from back during the legislative session this spring. Um, those mega projects, the way that legislation worked, was it basically created a structure for economic development incentives for up to two of those projects, and so that's the first of them. Um, I think at the at the end of the day, you know, probably too early to to answer direct impact questions to to Riley County and our, and our region, but I do think that. Uh, from kind of a broader economic development view, that's a good, really, really good thing for the state. Uh, I think our state's going to get a lot of looks when it comes to projects and when it comes to folks. Uh, no different than we see with, uh, you know, with some of the announcements that we've had here over the course of the last couple of months. Um, whether they be large or, or in some cases smaller, but, but very focused on some specific industries. Anytime you're announcing success and you're announcing projects in, in our business, that attracts attention and that attention's uh, that organic. Uh, attention really is worth more than than a lot of times with anything can get marketing wise so i think that's going to be really important for the state i think the fact that you know we're positioned here with a university and with two major talent pipelines in in fort riley uh, transitioning soldiers uh, spouses partners family members and then k-state and, and both undergraduate students graduate students uh, i think that we're going to be well positioned going forward uh, as it comes to being able to respond and or play a role in projects even if they're not uh, even if they're not specifically located located right here in our immediate region. Uh, third thing I wanted to touch on is the rodeo. And I promised Janet, um, Janet is headed up to, Janet and Amber from our office are headed up to um, um, a veterans career fair up before Riley today. So they're gonna be out promoting area jobs to, to veterans on, on post today at the event. And so uh, that's, that's a big undertaking and, and that's what Janet was able to to join, but I told her I would get the name correct. So the Military Family Appreciation Night at the Cobb Valley Rodeo um, is scheduled for next Thursday night on the 21st. Uh, as always, um, just doing a lot of work with that to ensure that, uh, that those tickets are getting out there and, and, and available to military um, uh, members and their families. Our partners up on Fort Riley, uh, MWR and USO are doing distribution on a post of those tickets. Um, Got all the sponsors back for that event uh, that had last year. So I think that's really positive. And, and obviously we appreciate the support from the county on that event and, and the funding that helps allow for the purchase of those tickets and ensuring that our military members are are, uh, are being welcomed into that into that great event and can take part in all the festivities out there uh, next week. So uh, a couple other updates on the, on the uh, Fort Riley side of things. Uh, First Brigade is home. As you know, they were extended. They've been in Eastern Europe. They are home. Second Brigade is on their way to the National Training Center in California. That's their second time there uh, here this year. And so obviously they're drawing conclusions there as you see fit, but they are, but they're being sent back for some more training and would anticipate activity will continue to, there will continue to be some activity out of Fort Riley um, going forward. Uh, also had um, changes of command, the commander of uh, Irwin Army uh, Hospital, uh, as well as the Garrison Command. Uh, so, you know, uh, Colonel Edgar Arroyo and, and Colonel uh, McCanny were two folks that we saw a lot around the community, were very engaged, very active, came to uh, MRC, um, came to, um, MRC lunches uh, regularly, were speakers, participated in things, and so they will both be 
be missed, but it's been good to start to engage with their uh, replacements and, and those transitions have happened here recently. Um, and then finally, um, uh, last but most definitely not least, I uh, want to introduce Mike Matson, uh, a face that's not uh, a stranger to many of you, but uh, Mike has just recently joined our team in the last eight days, correct? Um, and is going to be serving uh, at the chamber as director of external affairs. So you're going to be seeing a lot from Mike. Mike's going to be a primary point of contact uh, related to uh, local county and county um, related issues. So obviously a lot of time with both uh, the commission, Riley County Commission, Manhattan City Commission, um, also uh, heading up a lot of our uh, business advocacy efforts and, um, and, and things going on at the state and federal level as well. So it's great to have Mike on the team. He's got a lot of experience in that in that realm. And I just turn over to Mike to uh, give a little bit of background and talk a little bit about what he's doing for us at the chamber. Thank you, Darren. Commissioners, I'm uh, delighted to be here. I will keep you long, but I did want to introduce myself formally. Uh, Darren touched on the, the job that I'll be doing. Just to give you a little bit of a background in terms of how this position came about, the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, Executive Committee, and uh, our colleague Jason Smith have been having a number of conversations related to the importance of the Chamber involving itself in a deep and meaningful way with all levels of government. So much of the decisions that get made by uh, government entities at every level impact our members. And so the decision was made to create this position of Director of External Affairs. Uh, Darren touched on my background. Let me just give you the, the quick Mike Matson 101. And, and I do intend to get with each of you one on one just to start building the relationship. Uh, I'm a lifelong Kansan. I was actually born here in Kansas in Manhattan. My dad's a K Stater. He graduated with a degree in agronomy and we went back to the family farm like so many folks of his generation. Uh, he grew weary of the debt involved with farming, sold the farm, and became a school teacher. And we moved to Wichita. So that that's typical of a lot of folks in my generation in Kansas. There's some connection to rural and some connection to the city. My wife and I have been back in Manhattan since 1998. Uh, we love it here. Uh, my career professionally has been sort of three components: journalism. I covered politics and government for a television station and radio network in Topeka that morphed into actual politics and government work when I had the great <coughs> fortune to serve as communications director for Bill Graves when he was governor of Kansas. Uh, and Kansas governors to serve two terms. So when he got reelected, those of us on the staff started looking for work. And that landed me back here in Manhattan where I managed policy communications for Kansas Farm Bureau for a number of years. So I look forward to building the relationship with you collectively and individually. And please don't hesitate. I've got some business cards, which I'll leave here if you guys can Pass those out. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to building the relationship. And if I can be of help at any time, please don't hesitate to let me. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. And obviously, we are really excited to have Mike on board on the team. And it's going to be a really valuable resource for us and make sure that we're we're giving full uh, full effort to to both local, state, and uh, and, and federal issues. So uh, with that, Commissioner McKinley, thank you. And commissioners, thank you for, Chair McKinley, and commissioners, thank you for having us this morning. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I can't think of anything at the moment. All right. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay, you bet. Commissioners, thanks, Jeff. It was before 10 o'clock. We <laughs> put a lap track in here. Yeah, then we can. Yeah, bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. Right Let me get a treadmill in here and oh. I can get my workout in too. So. <laughs> Kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> this week it's been to do much. Just been busy. Uh -oh, trouble. Okay. What did you do now? Good okay. 
teachers taking their code names. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Do this anymore, I guess. My, yeah. my school was old when I went to it. So I think <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, when, when, they, when you get a teacher takes it back in there, you get you some work. I'll be in front of everybody to take it back there. My principal in grade school in middle school had a big old blue paddle hanging on his wall. Uh, Board of Education. Mm -hmm. Board of Education. That's like one of my favorite uh, presentations at a Kansas Association County's conference. Was a county commissioner got up there. He was speaking on something, but he said talking about it was when uh, ADD was new. You know, attention deficit disorder. You know, kids. You know, that's they're saying kids had didn't behave. And he said, "Yeah, when I was young, I had ADD." My father uh, prescribed the medicine and I was cured. Thanks. Amy. Here. <laughs> Second time we've heard that now. <laughs> it's been a long week, huh? It has. Yeah. Shaping up to be another long year, really. Well, we're only halfway through. That's, yeah, I know. I hear you. Shaping up to be really who already is. I know. I'm trying to be positive. <laughs> <laughs> and there's David chiming in, not being positive as usual. <laughs> I'm being real. Okay. Oh, yeah. that, that's always my excuse too, right. so I understand. I've got, I've got two teenage daughters. I'm being real. <laughs> you didn't bother to look around before you no, said I'm that, did saying, you? No, okay. I'm I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> man, they, they make me tired some days. So I just. You know, I just, you know, if I had to deal with work and teenagers, oh. I don't think. Oh, wow. Well, I have to deal with work and people that you could probably consider teenagers. <laughs> Is that the same thing? <laughs> no. 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 And her windshield is dirty. She says, well, my little windshield wiper thingy doesn't work. And really, we've worked on this for four years. It's empty. So, you know, you have to refill it. Well, that's why I brought it to you, Dad. <laughs> At least you know you're still important. See, that's yeah. the key there. Sometimes. Yeah. Like I said, I had a full head of dark hair, and then I had three teenage Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. At least you knew the I can't figure out what my excuse is. Then. <laughs> At least you knew the technical term for this. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the windshield wiper thingy. Wiper thingy. Yeah. yeah. It's in the manual. We should didn't come and ask you for blinker fluid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always played that with them when they were first got, got their car. You know, you have to take out the summer air, put in the winter air, like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's So many pieces of the clock it matches the computer. But they change the yeah, it does, doesn't it? I mean, even the, the second. Yeah, that's unusual. So when it changed the battery, yeah. the clock in my office, it's like on Eastern time zone. So they don't, it don't matter if I set it, it ends up on Eastern time zone. So I just gave up. That's uh, it sounds like somebody's messing with you. Probably you. <laughs> I don't have access to your office. Let's just put that out there right now. But I, I find it humorous. Yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is. But no matter how I, I said it, just... it ends up an hour ahead. Okay. I gave up. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Good morning, commissioners. Elizabeth Ward, human resource manager. I am here to talk to you today about the uh, proposal to implement our salary study. 
And I also am including some options that uh, we we normally look at in our in our regular budget process so that we have some comparisons and some some options for the commissioners to consider so just a little background for yourselves and and um, <clears throat> anyone that in the community that might be looking normal average year our annual budget process includes um, the budget and finance officer and myself working to create personnel budgets um, projections for the next year we do that by looking at all of our current employees, our open positions, and looking at um, if each person was to receive a, a positive performance evaluation, they would receive one step in merit for our pay processes. Um, and then separately look at what the cost of the COLA or the cost of living would be. So we have done that. Um, we've actually created those budgets three times um, already this year in different forms because of our different situations. Um, and we've also worked with all the department heads to then have them review and look at each, each person in the position, each open position, where we need to be for recruiting and placement. So um, this year, however, the, the difference is, is that we've decided to also look at our compensation plan and evaluate whether or not it is currently competitive in the market um, in order to drive our retention and our recruitment efforts and be able to fill and, and retain people in, those, in our positions. So we have, I talked to you on Monday, we've done several, uh, several research projects in that area. Um, I presented you the, the data of where we got information, what I, what I did to collect that information. And so we'll kind of go through a couple of things. I want to be really clear for anyone listening on some of the definitions, because we talk about a lot of words and we might, I want to have a shared, for this purpose, I want to have a shared understanding of the meaning. So COLA, I, I refer to it as COLA across the board almost always, it's the cost of living adjustment. Um, and the purpose of that is, is it, it's a way for employers to provide a partial offset to inflation related to the cost of goods and services. And it is not meant to necessarily be an exact moment of inflation rate, but it helps us offset some of those costs to make sure that our, our employees are still able to have uh, a, a, a valuable uh, quality of life. In Riley County, the percent of COLA is based on the Consumer Price Index for Urban Consumers, the CPIU, um, which measures monthly changes to the consumer prices. Our pay process specifically states that we will use the 12-month period ending December 31st of the previous calendar year. And Daryl has got, collected that information. Right now, that, that information, and won't change, it's historical now, is 7%. Step or merit um, a lot of times I will talk about merit and internally we refer to it as a step increase, but that is, that is our increase given to employees based on performance. So we require a performance evaluation for every employee in our, in our county. If that person receives a satisfactory performance evaluation, then for our pay processes that, that all of those employees receive a merit increase, which is um, found on our professional scale, or excuse me, our formal pay scales as a one step in their pay grade. Generally, it's about 3%. This year, the average would be 3.04% of uh, the current pay rate. So that would be the step increase. Market, we've had a lot of conversations about market, including market rate, market value. This, we need to be really clear, and I, and I just cannot reiterate enough, is the salary paid for positions of similar requirements and responsibilities in our region that we recruit from. This is not the value of any person doing any job. The people in our jobs are invaluable. They bring things to the jobs that are not required. They are above and beyond. That are unique and different and can't necessarily be replaced. What we have to look at is those KSAs, the knowledge, skills, and abilities for the positions. Okay, um, competitive pay, which is what our goal is, is to be competitive in the market. Of, so basically, again, the similar job position, similar KSAs, similar responsibilities to be competitive. We have in the past and I, I shouldn't say we, uh, because none of us in this room, but previous commissioners have set a pay philosophy to be in the 75th percentile. So <clears throat> of similar positions, we would not be the market leader. We're not the top of the, of the market. We're not out there above anyone else or even at the highest, but we would be competitive um, in, that, in that market rate. <clears throat> and then compression. We need to talk and consider compression. Compression occurs when formal pay scales are not adhered to, and when we deviate for whatever reason, because of the economy or what have you, excuse me, <clears throat> that doesn't go bad. <clears throat> so it also happens when people have been in a position for longer periods of time, which we have a very significant tenure here at Riley County. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't bring any water. <clears throat> so 
Um, and then that basically what happens is that people who've been in those positions may make the same or possibly even less <clears throat> than a new you, hire. You need water. I've got a, a bottle of water. <laughs> I've, got water. Some water. I've, got some, I've got a bottle of water. I've been fine all morning and then I've just got that. Chill. <laughs> I have been. It was, and I feel so much better, but it's just still in there. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This also can refer to managers or supervisors who end up making the same or even less of some of their supervisees. And that that's a real concern. We want to make sure that we are compensating for people who have long tenure and who are doing a job of overseeing um, other people. So <clears throat> with that being said, we already talked about the potential COLA increase that we have recommended, and it says 20, yeah, that's right, 2021, 2022, 2021. So, sorry, my years are all confused. So 7%. So we've talked about that. <clears throat> Step increases, we've talked about what that would be, and I've given you numbers at the end. So we've got a, uh, one of our, uh, our our budgets has been with a 7% um, COLA and a, and a step increase, okay? That's what's <laughs> listed in the budget currently, correct? The step that increases was, in the budget. changed it. Okay, you changed it in this one. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's the first comparison through the last one, and you've changed yours. Yeah, right. To coincide with her salary study. With the salary study. study. Oh, right. okay. Oh, so, that because that's our recommendation. Oh, so, okay. we, we changed our budget to align with our recommendation. Oh, because I noticed the difference in numbers, and I couldn't figure out which one it is. So, yeah, <laughs> that's taking this into consideration it on our, our new budget worksheet. It is. Okay. It's not making oh. an assumption, but that's our recommendation. So, we wanted to put to you the numbers okay. of what the recommendation okay. would affect. Okay. okay. All right. That's because the commission had asked the budget planning committee to look at getting a flat mill levy yes. right and so yes the the recommendation for the salary study is less than what a seven percent coal would be for everyone. right it is and so that gets us to what our recommendation our combined recommendation would be so our recommendation although you have the options of a step a step and or cola both we would recommend that we would implement the salary study the salary study i, I want to explain we've talked about where we got the information and we'll go over that again but i do want to explain how it would be implemented and what you would be what you would be discussing here. So the pay rates that we are suggesting that we are proposing would be current to market rate. They would include the appropriate cost of living adjustment and the adjustment for the assigned step for 2023. There would not be an additional request um, on top of what we're requesting in those numbers. And I know we've discussed that and I just want to make sure that we're all clear and on the same page about that. So the dollar amount that we are showing now would be the personnel costs associated for 2023, that would be our personal cost. If you choose to adopt the salary study, um, we believe this is going to be the option that is going to drive our operations, ensure our services continue to be quality and, and our positions filled. It's going to increase our employee quality of life of current employees, but it's also going to reduce our turnover and, and our time to fill, which is going to be extremely impactful. And the impact, <clears throat> the impact is going to be on filling the positions because uh, we do have people in position, but we aren't able to hire <coughs> new employees at this point. <clears throat> okay. So implementation. We have already implemented phase one of the, of the year homeless compensation. <coughs> oh my goodness. You need a cough drop? Mm -hmm. I don't have any. But. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was cool. I should have said that. Yeah. I should have just left that one alone. My bad. It's just curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do. Thank you. And our health department director's prepared. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I did not have this experience. It's summer. You don't think that you need those. Yeah, let's try it. If you're willing to injure yourself, then do it can help you. Yeah. Oh, because you can do first aid? Yeah. 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 <laughs> or if not, David's there for backup on that one. Right. Okay, if I go down in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so it could get worse. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Phase one. I am so sorry. I did not have any of these issues earlier today. Um, phase one. We've already implemented phase one of this year-long salary study. And so that was effective mid-year. It did increase all of our positions consistently 10.5%. And I think it's really important to understand that with that phase one, many of our positions moved into a competitive market rate. So yeah, I am not, I'm, I'm not saying that every single position needs an additional increase. And that and that's important to understand. It's not saying that um, we didn't need that 10 and a half. It's with that 10 and a half, 
we are then able to say many of our positions are competitive. <laughs> Phase two is what we're proposing today. This would move those positions that remain out of alignment with the market into a competitive position. Um, and again, it just talks about neither here, neither one alone is the total effect. These are, this is a combined year long phase and process. Okay, so then digging into the actual positions, <clears throat> if we are uh, with the implementation of phase one, if we would move forward to phase two, we would have 20 positions, which based on the market would merit more than a 20% increase. Um, Actually, know what else I'm going to need by the time we get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Really, really it's my heart goes out the bottom. <laughs> it's a really nice team effort. I like this. I'm, I'm kind of ironic considering what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm well choking. Uh -huh, yeah. I've been choking. It's all about strategy. We know. Yeah. 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 Oh, I was going to say, Clancy, I literally looked at you and I thought, the only thing he's going to help is like probate. It's the first thing I've done. Okay. Let's keep Clancy on this, please. Okay. <clears throat> So you you know you have this in here, but I want to uh, the dollar impact of that group of people would be two hundred seventy six thousand seven hundred twenty six dollars annually. So that is a significant amount of money. But a lot of the positions in that in that group are positions that yeah have a very high increase, but the dollar amount is not as high as some of the others <coughs> because they're starting so low. So the one position that I highlighted is our minimum rate right now is at 1048. <clears throat> I'm proposing that we move that minimum rate to $15 an hour. That in itself is a 43% increase. But the, the dollars that we're talking about <clears throat> in that type of position are, are minimal. Those are going to be generally 1,000 hour positions, $4,500 annually. And the reason I highlighted that is because I don't want us to get <clears throat> caught up in just percentage, we have to make sure that what the percentages mean to our dollars, to our bottom line. <coughs> okay, additionally, 13 positions are recommended to increase between 10 and 15%, which would account for $81,722 annual impact. Those positions would include things such as such positions as our record assistants, our public works operators, <coughs> our network administrator, and human resources. 59 positions at Riley County would merit a 5 to 10% increase, and 57 positions merit less than 5% increase, um, which would be, again, in, in addition to the approved issue. So I want to make it abundantly clear. I've spoken with all of you. I've spoken with all the department heads. No current employee at Riley County in, in this proposal would receive a decrease rate from what they're currently making. Okay, so even those positions, as, as I know, I've had several comments over the last day when this was published, um, position pay rate may have changed draft, up or down. My recommendation is that person um, would be held at the pay rate that they are at until they match market rate. Um, I have also included a longevity increase for those people who have been here over 10 years. And the reason that's important is to go back to compression. So the, the way that we would move through this is that if the if the commissioners would approve the pay scale, as we have discussed with the numbers that we've discussed, um, current employees would be realigned to the proper range and the proper step based on their years and position. <clears throat> Michelle and I will work on assigning those based on the information that we have from their personnel records. Then we will work with the department heads to verify that we have correct information, similar to, to how we do all of our budgets for every future year. Those positions, those people who have been in positions less than five years that are over market rate right now would remain 
at the same pay rate that they're currently at with their 10 and a half percent increase for 2023. Those people who have been in positions for more than 10 years <clears throat> who are slightly over or might be at or above market would receive a 5% uh, longevity increase because we need to, we really need to think about compression and make sure that we are not um, moving everyone into the same pay band no matter what their years of position are. And we have to remember that people with longevity bring things to those jobs. They bring efficiency, they bring capability, they bring knowledge, both institutional knowledge and knowledge of their job that can't be replaced just by the minimum requirements of the position description. So that, that does have value to Riley County. Um, so overall impact, finance, financial impact, you guys have a chart. I also have the dollars there. <clears throat> so if we did, if, if you would approve merit increases, so step increases, the cost for the Riley County for personnel would be $27,134,872. If you would approve merit and COLA increases, again, in the form of a step increase and a 7% cost of living, the cost of personnel would be $29,019,577. And the implementation of the salary study, as we're being recommended, would be a personnel cost of $27,929,007. <laughs> You've got the chart there broken out by department. And I will say that um, I, I believe that our combined recommendation, I mean, I have spoken with every single department head. Rich and Daryl and I have worked on this um, nonstop, incessantly, um, really hammering out numbers over and over and over again. Um, we did go back to the budget committee and then, um, you know, they allowed me to participate as well did go back and uh, work on the recommendation that the commissioners made of decreasing you know, our overall budget. The salary study implementation um, actually came in at a less dollar amount than I had <clears throat> prepared you to expect. Um, and so I think overall we have tried to do mo all of the recommendations that the commissioners would like to see. Um, I would like to add that there have been several departments that have made adjustments. Um, Julie, I don't know if you were able to make the commissioners aware, but she will, she decided not to fill the clinic coordinator position. We have um, some uh, other departments that are looking at open positions and looking to say, okay, where can we find efficiencies? Um, so we are taking this as a whole, we are taking this very seriously. Um, so our recommendation would be to implement the proposed salary study for 2023, which would be effective the first day of the pay period which is December 24th, 2022. And of course, we'll stand for Christmas break. After, yeah, Christmas break. <laughs> Question that I have, and, and I kind of favor number two as opposed to three. Um, you know, cost of living increase this year is right at like last night, they were citing around 9%, and, and it looks like it's going to be going up higher um, in the next year. So I'm concerned about that for a whole year. Uh, plus, interest rates are going to be going up again, which will, all those things will really affect our employees. So that's where I'm kind of looking at this number two with the step plus cost of living. So, I, so it's a couple of thoughts on that. So, first of all, um, yes, we are never right at today's. Uh, CPI, right? Yeah. And we always use December's and then we, we catch up because we are consistent with that. We will catch up in every year with our COLA. So I know you're, you're not wrong that it's a different rate than it was in December, um, but we have also been, you know, we're basically affect what the way that we implement it, we feel the effect and then we implement the cost of living. And, and that's, that's been our process. And it does, it, at least it's consistent. It's not as of June, but it is consistent. And then it may go up, it may go down and we'll have that. The, the reason that I would highly recommend that we look at the salary study over the cost of living, and I and I get that there there would be some positions who will make more money if we do the cost of, li of living adjustment at step. There will be many positions who will make less money, and the problem is is the effect, the overall effect to Riley County, to our individual departments, and to our service will be that we will continue to have very many open positions that we are not able to fill. If the the dollars will not be applied to where the most need is for the, for the positions. They will be applied consistently to every position. And so some of the positions who are already at or above market will, will 
will get the same increase as those positions that are well below. And we will have a challenge filling our public works operators, our mechanics, our customer service reps. Um, I'm looking out across like the departments here to think of the other. Yeah, yeah. So customer customer service, our records, RT. Um, yeah, IT is a great example. Mm -hmm. um, IT is a spectacular example. We have had a position open for six months, and we know we know we know for a fact that it's our market rate is significant numbers less than than what we're what we're going to need to be able to fill that position. And and I Corey's not in here, right? But he is he has shared with me that he is doing both jobs, and he has literally been working every night and every weekend to try to keep the network administrator and the director roles and responsibilities going and 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 he's going to burn out I mean, he didn't tell me i'm burning out i'm telling you he's going to burn out um and that makes me very worried because then we're going to have two big open positions um and and none of us can do our jobs if we've got all of these important positions open the impact will be the impact to the to the county will be greater by funding the salary study I would mention maybe one other thing there too is you know we made the mid year just in the ten and a half percent, which helps off balance that, and that carries over through next year um, as well. So you know on our front end of our scale, kind of eliminated what we needed to eliminate, but everybody across the broad lines, whether you're at the bottom of everything or at the top of everything, got enough of an increase to help offset some of it. Maybe the rest yeah. of the year doesn't end up that way, but. There's no way of guessing that at this point in time, even with 7% on top of it. So. John, that's a vital point. This is not a standalone proposal. Right. That is absolutely mm -hmm. vital. Yeah, we have given to it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, I can't I can't iterate that enough. And we will have to help employees understand that as well, because it's true. We have all received a really good offset. We'll be seeing that tomorrow officially, correct? Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they will all receive tomorrow. We'll be seeing that tomorrow officially. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. And that continues on. That sure. is included in this. That does not go away. So mm -hmm. I've taken the 10.5% base. That is our base. For moving forward and then then the salary study is placed on top of that. then the key is when we get into next year's budget cycle we take the, what you're talking about into a larger consideration it is fair and i see rick good. smiling that, over there that, so you know there's the key, key. Yeah. once we make the salary adjustment commissioners you have to continue to implement the step and cola if you don't it gets us what brought us here it is right? it yes. just does and it's like they say in these studies either pay me now or pay me later and generally, you have the price of a consultant to get you to this point as well. And so it just costs you more. Which I want to say thanks on because yeah. that, that saved us probably six to $70,000 easy. Yes. So. And I'm, not, I'm at my point's end, but it's been worth it. <laughs> um, and I don't mean across the board. I just mean with, with, with the spread. And all of a sudden, you're not coughing then. I know. Now I'm done. I but to get to Catherine's point of appreciate your thoughts, but... That's exactly right. We we addressed it with the ten and a half percent. I appreciate you being concerned yes. with the high cost of living, as everyone does, and some of us would get more money that way. That's not the intent. It's yes. to get it's our to organization even. correct and our entire pay scale to help all of us as department heads hire people, and so that's addressed mm -hmm. with that ten and a half percent. That took in. That's why we proposed. Okay, look at what inflation is doing. Look at this. That's why we need to do the mid-year increase. So that addressed your concern there. And I also would like to remind the commissioners on Monday, I shared with you <clears throat> the projected cost of not filling positions. And remember in April, I said there was going to be 86. We projected 86 open positions. As of July 1st, I would project if we do nothing else, 104 open positions. That cost, and, I, and, it, and again, I know we, it's very hard to nail down. I've said that multiple times, but the, but the Society of Human Resources would estimate that cost for us specifically based on our average salary as $2.2 million of lost productivity, morale, increased turnover, time that all of these people are spending to recruit and fill positions. They're not able to do their job when they're when they're doing that. Well, and like you said, and you mentioned that when somebody's gone for that long, everybody else Somebody else in the office right. can pick up that and slack and it's putting stress on the other employees too. And that causes higher turnover because I can do this for a short period of time. I can help out. I can cover my my all my yeah, team. Yeah, for a few, but when we've got six, six months, months, yeah, then it's getting to be it. Yeah. And like I said, I, I was from looking, reading through this stuff over the last couple of nights. Um, but too many late nights reading. <laughs> I'm with you. Because <laughs> then when I go to sleep, it's still running in my head. Uh -huh. I can't get to sleep. And then you're dreaming about spreadsheets. I'm, no, I, I haven't like meant that. about them, but, it, but my mind won't turn off 
to get to sleep at night. But I always thought I thought three it's to balance everything out to get everybody where they should be. That's the but, intention. But I have a question then on how you're gonna implement it. Sure. Because you've got all these different um you know, some are 0 0.77, 0 0.89. Is that going to be adjusted? Or are you going to round, you know, or each physician is going to be? We have a matrix mm -hmm. of how to set step for each physician. And so that matrix, um, that those numbers that you have are time and service for each time and position for each individual person as of July 1st. <clears throat> so if the person is in their position on July 1st, they, are, they should be assigned a step one. And then every year after that, they get a step increase. So um, we, we do have a matrix. So it's basically their time and position. Right. I know, but I'm just saying when you're making these adjustments, you're going to have to adjust that matrix a little every, but here's what I don't. Well, it's as of, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's as of, we only do a step increase at the, at the end of the year. Right. right. So if they're hired before July 1st, they get a step. If they're hired after July 1st, they don't get a step. So we look at that, that exact yeah. date, and then we assign it at the end of the year. But I'm just saying to make all these adjustments, you're going to have to go back and adjust that scale for everyone. These numbers include that. But how, and I know you want, but are you having to make new grades though? Cause like, that's what I was looking at. I look at one Q, there's some people that are getting, they're already high. There's another one that's gonna get a two and a half. There's another one that's gonna get a six and a half. And then S, S goes from, some are getting, they're saying they're a minus number to a plus clear up to a plus nine point. So are you gonna to have to make new grades for all those positions? Are you gonna um, have Q1, Q2, yes. and Q3? Or yes. no. is that? <laughs> yeah, no, and yes. <laughs> so I do see people looking for what he's referring to. Commissioner, the commissioners have each individual person's pay rate. Mm -hmm. That is not public information. That's, indiv that's, that's individual to people. Well, so this is an individual, this is your, over is, is the, by position by name is by position. Oh yeah, this, so yeah, she, this, uh, yeah. The, okay, okay, yes. You also have you, you also have one by people. Yeah, and I. So uh, so no, what do you look? I, no, uh -huh. we don't. You do. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, okay. you you should have had one the day that I gave you the documents. I may not have left one in your office, but I do have one for you. Oh okay, and I and and like. You had said, I'm not looking at it as individual, what we're doing for individuals. Okay. I'm looking at yes. positions. Yes. So the, but so some of he, these positions, you've got, right now they're called a Q, which is on that big right. matrix box you've got. Right. But if you've got everybody in Q, are they going to be changed to a different yes. grade then to yes. account for that? <clears throat> this is the new pay, mm -hmm. this is the new pay uh, ranges that I would recommend. And I can make it, I was trying to make it smaller because it was too little on the screen. But and I was assuming on this that your mid range is just basically the aggregate of those two numbers, right? Yes. Okay. That's, be, I had that same question. Our steps will be applied, but about. basically if you take whatever position we're looking at, so if we take this appraiser to your residential, if they, if the person has zero years experience, mm -hmm. meets all of the requirements of the position, not less than, but meets the requirements of the position, but ha doesn't have any necessarily extra or increased level of um, skills, response or skills or knowledge or ability, then they would start at $20.50 per hour. Then if they've already been in the position for three years, they will stop, start at a step three, which will be, we have we have a whole matrix of how to get them to step three. Okay, so these grades aren't, those grades will, anymore. You're they going will not, to, we will to, have a complete break from our current pay scale. Oh, okay. We will have a new pay range system. Oh, okay. And that's intentional. That's what I was trying to, I was trying to right. with the, the other things that everybody had a letter and then steps across yes. it, but that's not. We're going, yeah. So my going proposal would be to get rid of that completely. Oh, okay. So that's why I wasn't sure how that Every position is listed. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, right now you have to say, okay, my position is um, an office assistant too. And I have to go look and see it's an M. And then I have to go find the pay scale to find what an M is. Right. So this would basically say, okay, so if you're an office assistant too, you're right here. You're in range. So. Oh, okay. I wouldn't follow that. I yeah. Know. Yeah. We will get rid of the letters and we will use these ranges instead. Oh, and okay. then we will keep the steps. The steps will be weighted as they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in, within each range, we will have steps for years in position and experience. Okay. With the same amount of steps as the current system. The current it's system. As well, that way people don't top out too early. Or it doesn't go off 18. Isn't it? 18. <laughs> okay. And that's what's steps. on the current system. Yes. Okay. I, thought, I, was, I had 20 in my head, but. Mm -hmm. 
It's 18. That's yeah. usually the standard, usually 20. Like the one time we had 25. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's what yeah. we've got to work is 20. Yeah, and, and each position, again, not people, but each position does have a maximum dollar value for the impact at Riley County. And, mm -hmm. and so that's why we have to have a maximum. It has a minimum yeah. as well, but, but there is a point where that person obviously may still be giving great service, but to, re, to yep. refill that position, there's a maximum dollar equivalent value. But what that means, as long as there's a COLA given, they yes. get the COLA. So they if you're will. maxed out, as long as the COLA is approved, you at least get that. You just, yeah. Especially yeah. if you're on the professional, you don't get that average of the staff. No, right. no. You just get the COLA. No. Right, and that's important because obviously your cost of living will continue to increase. You want people making less money over time than that we would have compression. Yeah, I, I think it's an understanding how th this worked with this. Yes. That, that's a, the letters will go away. Them work. Yeah, the position. So what, what, they're, what they're looking at is basically every position and then the difference of where it would be. So it's the exact same document that I gave out on Monday, only just put it into a different format with, with percentages. Yeah. From my perspective, this gives us the best option, I think, right now in real time. And then looking forward, um, there's a lot of uncertainties, you know, in, in the personnel and the um, employment world. I think it's heavily weighted, even more so in the public sector right now. Um, we see the private sector gaining quicker than maybe we anticipated at this point in time. The public sector isn't catching up with it. It, it just isn't. That's just the reality. So in order to meet some of those requirements and meet the requirements that we have internally right now. You know, we got to look at both ends of that. This also constructs very well with the budget process that we're currently in and, and how that works through everything else. I know it's a challenge with costs and other things to try to keep department budgets down, but we needed to prioritize in my opinion, one, not probably both. And I think everybody from what I've seen, at least in the latest worksheet did that. So, um, I think we're all on the same page there. That's what I needed to see. And um, this seems to be the most comfortable fit at this point in time. Yeah, I, I remember my, the last one, you know, implementing this as mm -hmm. most uh, across the board because that just keeps things out of whack. And I think as you get into next year's <coughs> budget cycle, we don't we don't know what that's going to be yet. It seems like everybody else added everything else on top of that. I think as we get into next year, that's going to be have to be our shift in focus with personnel when we get to that point a year from now. But it'll come faster than we think. So um, anyway, <laughs> so yeah, what we just do in the budget? Yeah, yeah. It, seems like, it seems like I was looking at some of these spreadsheets with the same fervor as I'm doing this year. But yeah, it is what it is. So. Um, and I think overall, I think the analysis of this is looked at each position within each department um, pretty heavy hand handily. Um, there's still a lot of uncertainties there, so there'll still be some shifts, but um, my guess is there'll be some probably unused personnel funds still going into next year uh, in this total too, so we won't probably leverage out all the way to the Whatever it was, the twenty-seven nine nine seven and some change. So, so the commission clear on the recommendation, the change from on the budget worksheet mm -hmm. that is because yeah. the, of the proposed. And you know the the real struggle staff had to get the numbers to you late. We didn't want to mm -hmm. get them to you this late. Was that? we were uh, surprised that our recommendation was going to be less than COLA. And when you think about it, everyone getting 7% is a huge number. It so is. that's the reason why it was yeah. reduced. And this accomplishes what we need to do and get those positions that need it the most, right. the funds. And I'm, I'm I'm comfortable with going against the COLA this year because we did the 10.5%. Yeah. Well, we, and we really right. didn't go against the COLA. Right. You know, we, we addressed the it at the time that it's happening. Yeah. 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 Yeah, with total effect. It's just we had we had two steps this year, two phases instead of the one that we normally do year end. And so the total effect of this will have included. 
and us as department heads and new commissioners may hear about it at the end of the year is why didn't I get a cost of living increase or a step increase? Because some will get neither. We're going to have to educate our employees. Remember, you got 10.5% mid-year. Right. That addressed that you did get raised. Compare your annual salary in 2022 to 2023, and you will see that difference. And so it, it will put stress on employees. There's nothing more contentious than messing with their pay or their benefits. Yes. And so it will have to be an educational process done by all of us in our respective departments. Yes. Pay, pay is the most personal aspect of our work. Mm -hmm. OK. Okay. Well, are we all comfortable then? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that the board approve the proposed salary set of results for Rather County personnel for the 2023 budget, which will be effective on December 24th, 2022. I would second that. And moved and seconded to approve the proposed salary study uh, effective December 24th, 2022. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks for all your work. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your work on this. I know it wasn't easy. Thank you. Commissioners, thanks for saying it was a lot of work. It is time for budget planning committee, Daryl E. Monthly cash flow reports. More numbers. More numbers. No, we're not done with them yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've got hours of them yet. It should have been the day of numbers. Shiloh was here. Oh, no. Morning, Commissioner. Daryl Lee, Budget and Finance Officer. And we will start with just the cash flow analysis. As you can see, we're, as everybody has said, halfway through the year. Uh, good part about that on the uh, construction progress cash flow analysis, we have only spent 13.84% so far. Uh, from what I'm seeing so far this in July, we're catching up a little bit mm -hmm. as weather is so we can actually do some work. Uh, so we have spent $1,045,943. Uh, uh, we've been reimbursed 169,837, and we had transfers in early on of 2,369,805. We had some small revenue of 34,344. So, if you go over to the cash reconciliation, our beginning cash was $7,501,076.98. Uh, the revenue was 2573986 Expenditures was the million forty-five four hundred three, as I mentioned. The ending unencumbered cash nine million twenty-nine thousand five sixty-nine, less the uh, approved projects that we already have the two million eight seventy-one two fifty-one, and less reserves, which you see below. I have the reserves broken out by group. Uh, that leaves us with four million twenty-nine thousand five eighty-seven. Be as exciting or <laughs> <laughs> See on the next page, those that are in blue are the projects that are completed. Um, and you know, there's a few more yet to go for this year, and we'll probably be adding more as the year goes on. The building cash flow is revenue of 362,437, reimbursements of 1,124. Uh, other cash coming in, so monthly $34, just about $168. Total revenue, $363,728. Uh, so far out of that group, we've only spent $101,433 for a total expenditure of only 25.81% of our 50%. Uh, budgeted revenue, we have the beginning unencumbered cash, $110,269. The revenue so far this year, 363,728. The expenses, 101,433, leaves us a current unencumbered cash, 372,564. Then our uh, economic development cash flow, oh, yes. uh, we transferred in the 185,500. Our beginning cash was 110,042. 
Our expenditures uh, has only been 83,394,000 for this month was the uh, leadership that you approved early on the transfer of thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, gotcha. That's, That's what this month was. Yeah. So we still have ways to go this month. Fifty uh, percent. We're still only spent twenty six point nine eight percent. So we still have ways to go there. Uh, down below, you have your uh, expenditures that you're anticipating for the year, and there's only the the two big ones so far. Uh, one in blue is at Flint Hills Regional Leadership Underwriter, you know, the sponsorship of the thousand. So any real questions on, oh, and the sales tax cash flow. Let's wrap that one up. And 50% of the year, we have spent a little bit more, uh, but still not much, 0.54%, not 50%, but 0.54%. Our revenue so far for this is $890,031, uh, reimbursed of $11,371, and KDOT gave us $6,773 for a total revenue of $908,174, and we've only spent $37,644 so far. Our beginning unencumbered cash was $4,197,993. Uh, again, our revenue, $908,174. And our expenditures are thirty-seven thousand six forty-four. Uncovered cash thus far is five million sixty-eight thousand five hundred twenty-four. Our estimated projects about three hundred fifty thousand, and the uh, projected unencumbered cash in balance four million seven eighteen five twenty-four. Now this is the old sales tax, which will expire in December. Actually, kind of flows through a couple months, I think, in the next year. Uh, so this portion or this part will have to be spent before we go into the next sales tax as well. If I understand all the yeah, legalities, I, is that correctly? Just as we get to the end of the year and the beginning of next year on this particular sheet, we need to probably break the two down so we know what we have left over. We know what we're working with. I'm, we've got a few months, obviously, but are we working on that? Okay, don't okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll be quiet. Then. It'll be set up in two separate funds. We're not going to commingle the funds that way. It's not right. obvious. Okay, good. I like so that. So when the budget actually is set up and everything, it'll have its own set okay. categories. Because, yeah, you don't want to mingle them that no. messy. <laughs> don't like messy. Uh, and then you can see the projects are already completed. Uh, they're in blue. And the uh, other ones, I uh, believe the Winkle Mills, Rippler Mills is one that just was completed. And I might make a suggestion on this one too that we go ahead and start eliminating the ones off that sheet that are already done. So keep sure. a broader sense of what um, is being done with current sales tax and then what will transfer over to the new set of projects. That's easily done. Okay. So is there any uh, real questions on? Any of the cash flows, no. and I will make those uh, if that's okay with the rest of the commissioners uh, to make eliminate those blue marks on the yeah. sales tax. We'll, we'll keep it, we just won't be something we present. That that's what we're yeah. aware yeah. of. Yeah. Anyone yeah. asked, you know, what's been completed and stuff, right. we'll, we'll just keep, it'll keep yeah. the no. focus of what's left mm -hmm. on this current sales tax compared to current what we're going to right. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm sure there'll be an audit question sometime. Oh, yeah, and we'll need yeah. to keep this. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, if there's any, if no other questions on those particular ones, I think I'll bring you back up to some time. Yep, next commissioner is John Eleanor, 1050. Okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Nobody up here is going to object to that. Right? 
Well, I know that people on either end of the table aren't going to object to that. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> kind of nice to stand up. Stand back in the corner. I guess. Stand leaning in your chair or whatever. No. It's, it's one of those old school desks like they used to. Yeah. Stand up desk. Yeah. You now made it's a new school too now. Accordion school. style. Yeah. I'm talking about yeah. the old wooden podium like. You know, Was that fine? Yeah. I've been chasing two flies around. This year. Yeah. Came early too. Plus a fight too. Oh, fight oh. flies. Oh yeah, I was chasing two around my house last night. Couldn't get any of them. That's the other thing. They're more agile than they have been. They are. Because I've been doing the same thing, chasing them. It drives my wife nuts. That's the first fly in the house. Oh, me too. Oh. Okay, that'll hold that up. Oh, well, wait a minute here. Oh, oh, so it's so it's flat. Flat. I know. Oh, oh, so I don't know if I'm or not. It's crazy. They're either faster or I'm getting significantly slower. I don't know. I catch one once in a while. It's not a given that I'm going to get Okay. Yeah. Good morning, Commissioner John Ellerman, Public Works. And I am not talking about money or dollars or numbers today. <laughs> but you'll come back eventually. Eventually, I will. <laughs> Trust me, his crews are spending it pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah the, uh, but we hear they're doing a good job. So it's all we good. Seal it, so yeah, we've done a bunch of money really fast. Um, so today we're talking about a request and a petition that was received to um, vacate a portion of Jubilee Lane. I brought this one so we can kind of get a better idea where that's at. Um, Marlin Avenue encasement. Back to the west of it is uh, Nelson's Landing. Um, and that subdivision in there. Uh, and then we're talking about the piece that, that was not part of the original subdivision. So we have a, a little better closer view of what that is right here. Um, this piece of road was brought out when the reconstruction of Marlette Avenue um, back in what, 2007 or so, as we were developing the project, it was decided to close the road through, through traffic to help speed up the construction process of the road. Um, in doing so, they made a detour of Nelson's Lane and crossed Julie Lane and back down in parallel Marlette Avenue and came back home further, further west. Yeah. And at that time, the current landowner of this property here um, insisted that we buy a permanent easement um, with the his idea was to develop it and make it um, curve and gutter, like a, the, the original portion of Julie Lane. Um, that never happened. The project has been done. The temporary easements that were off to the west have all gone away. This piece remains, um, and the right of way still remains. The new owners of the property. Um, to help make better use of the property uh, and non-use of the road really hasn't been used since that detour was it was there um, are requesting to vacate this portion of Julie Lane. And today all we have to do is uh, all we're doing is making a motion to accept the petition as being legal. The landowner is owns land in the county and is adjacent to the request of vacation. Um, from here, if it's accepted today, we go into an advertising phase where um, we set up a hearing date and from there, the, from the hearing, the date of the hearing, the commission can decide to approve or deny the vacation. So this isn't the final, this is just saying we're not. This is to, to accept. Go to the, to the, 
public meeting. Yeah, to officially accept the petition and then to proceed. We have a 20 day advertisement period, um, two consecutive weeks in the paper. And I, I think I put in there maybe about August 11th, August 15th would be about the soonest we can get the ads in the paper and when we, the public hearing to be held. Then you have to notify. Okay. We'll send out a letter to the adjacent landowners who the petitioner as well as the owners here to the west um, since they're the most effective and that's adjacent to the end of the Julie Lane. Now, we purchased that easement uh, back in 2007 for how much money are we going to recoup that? We will not recoup it as the cost of the, the property, but we will as property taxes as the property. Okay. So do you have any idea what we pay for? Uh, $9,000. $9,000. So we will recoup that in, in property taxes? Yes. Yeah. And right now it's not just tax. Yeah. Depending on how they choose to develop. Well, it. Just, just to clarify that question, that year they are not going to get an assessment that's going to equate to $9,000 in right. property taxes you're going to get back. So his answer, yes, was or maybe two. over some point in time, yes, yeah. but the county is not going to get a check for that amount as a sale of the property or in property taxes that year. But we're not that's but it gets it back on the tax roll, is what John is saying. We're also not spending money. But if you're asking if the requester is going to purchase the land from the county, the answer right now is no. That the process through vacation um, would be as the road's vacated, the center of the road goes to each side of the property. And in this case, it's the same owners. Oh, but it's too. Well, two then, tracks, same as older. Yeah, two tracks, but that won't be have to be divided to go to each track, or how does that work? Or are they going to combine them? <laughs> when, when, the, when the road was originally uh, purchased from the previous owner, that's when those 10 acres were split, split so that we just so that the county could put the road. Yeah. Um, I believe as part of the process is once the road is vacated, then it turns back into. A 10 acre lot. It's always been sold as a 10 acre lot, even though the GIS shows it as two five acre lots. Oh, okay. It's but it's all it is taxed as a 10 acre lot. It's oh, okay. for all intents and purposes, it's a 10 acre lot. It's just divided now because there's county property oh. smack down, smack dab down. Yeah. Oh, okay, thanks. And it just looks like to me there that that's, that's the better option is vacating yeah. that. And then you got more options to do something with the 10 acres instead of trying to do something between the two properties that would be beneficial of the course of time and he alluded to we don't have to maintain the road so there's not extra costs on top of that either at that point in time so there's savings involved in that as well <clears throat> there's nothing else you know, that's news yeah. that was yes yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> and you do too. <laughs> <laughs> the, the purchasing process was very. Uh, that's that's diplomatic. <laughs> that's diplomatic. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll go ahead then and uh, make the motion that we accept the petition and proceeding with the public hearing uh, without a uh, viewing and survey. Well, that was the recommendation. So. That's it, yeah. yeah. So I'll go ahead and move to accept the petition to vacate a portion of Julie Lane um, and uh, proceed with that public public hearing. I would second that. I move and seconded to accept the petition, petition to vacate a portion of Julie Lane. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Kirk. Yep. Thanks. Oh, he was just wondering who you were. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <friend. Thank you. laughs> Next, commissioners, we have Derek at 1110. Um, planners. Okay, trade. What he's, over, do like, he's over in the audience. He's going to do the comprehensive plan. Derek, what's he representing? Yeah. 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 yeah, he was. Yeah. He's one of our No, no, no. no he's representing the owner. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think he does contract. I think he does contract work. 
I know he does some work with the city of I was surprised it wasn't here when I put two and two together. Or he probably what will happen is he'll probably show up in like 15, 20 that minutes. Be later. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, I'll bet it'll be months after. <laughs> I feel bad for what we do, but I kind of, yeah. <laughs> so I tell my kids, don't worry, you'll get your turn. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I wonder if his, in that section on my lap, he had storage, he had some like rugs. That's easy. <laughs> How many people are doing that? Something tells me we're going to find out. <laughs> we'll have a version of what's going on. <laughs> yeah. well, I may talk to, I know somebody that was. But... I don't know. I think that was part of it. The feud, on the, um, yeah, I don't know. You know. It's been going on for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we got the easy numbers, right? What? Now it's the easy numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, now they, I, I feel like they're more easy than they so Yeah, it's getting, it's getting the right direction. Keep your version straight. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to keep. Yeah, I thought I had. Yeah. <laughs> I get a new one. I throw out the old one that way. Now I got the right one. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> may not have been far off with your number of 75 yesterday. <laughs> may I please send me version number 75? <laughs> and he did. We got lots of stuff. I finally kind of went through and condensed all the budget stuff. Good question. Me? Yeah. We got a few minutes. Don't tell on me. me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said nothing. <laughs> not, not my fault. I'm not mad, Rick. I want to talk to you. And look, we got the number to make sure that was the latest of the latest. Yeah, yeah, those kind of questions make yeah. me nervous. <laughs> yeah. Well, we worked on it. <laughs> I think we uploaded it four times yesterday. I was going to see you go over that. You guys have a real long. I said, I said, I Sorry, keep it. Um, one, come to the house. I 
No, it was only that easy. <laughs> it's required exercise. It's required patience, perseverance. Two values I've had to learn. Two virtues I've had to learn along the way. It's it's good. Yeah, uh, so I, I've been there since April of this year. So it's been pro. Yeah, I get about thirty to thirty-five, and then. You have to change something because you just hit a dead wall and then you know another 30 to 35 and you know so now i'm in that last little window there and it's going to be the toughest of all so it may take me three years to get to 6 30 i don't know <laughs> but I'm, I'm at a point where i'm not quitting that's all i can do yes storm on yeah they're actually they're actually bringing a team of their doctors here to Manhattan sometime in the fall, so I won't have to go to Topeka, but um, correct. Well, contractually for well, it's not official, official yet, full term, but it looks that way. No, they're just they're just taking over the whatever the contractual agreements are right now in the short term, and then they're defined deciding what that longer term plan is. But I can't see them backing out of that now, so that's probably the case. Well, the six mil, I think, is. Question mark. But if that's a city and county mm -hmm. and the foundation raises that, mm -hmm. yeah, to take care of the asset. Right. And then they got another 30 million dollars. And I know. And you know, I don't think I don't think current. I mean, they're going to want to probably move in their own admin there too. So there's. I have a feeling that's not going to be the only hospital to take over. Well, I would say there is a there. You know, there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but it makes more i mean it makes sense when you think about it because all the other clinics all the other specialties you know departments that they have are kind of set up between Topeka and Omega, so it makes sense from a logistic perspective anyway i don't know about finance but jc had was they did have the now, Topeka itself, this is your requirement. This is where you need to see seven patients, which is something we always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The ER always said I'm speaking against So you didn't get. I know I have two patients. Per day? I'm losing friends. It should have been a critical accident before you could. Yeah. But because they had to during that time frame, they But they still have I had one of our first ones. Yeah, yeah. Nice. so they could have like increased the <laughs> And in the area, you know, that specialty in itself is a big deal. So, I mean, you could do it. I made the mistake on Monday. I, was, I thought I was supposed to be up there at 1 30, and I was actually supposed to be up there at 2 30. I'm like, oh, great. I'm about to sit here for an hour. But they snuck me in and snuck me right back out. So, they, I mean, there's gaps of time if you plan it out, right? I guess. But, no, I don't well, <laughs> well, they're in their heyday. Yeah. 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 Tons of money on it. But here's the other. Yeah, that's what I mean. But here's the other part of that too is you know some of those programs you don't need to see everybody every month. You just need to see track, and you could do that through virtual means. And that's a 15 minute appointment that you can probably book insurance for half an hour. So you could get technically get two in that time frame if you planned it out right. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're at uh, eight seven south. Eight seven. I was not. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Yeah. They were talking. It just changed. I'm just standing here. Yeah. You're, you're the second from the land. That's what I mean. Now I got to hand over the bag. <laughs> 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 one more vote, you know. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to avoid this one. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> okay, let's hear it. Okay. <laughs> Hello, commissioners. Not that this is your lady. I love the idea of this, sir. That's the easy part. That's the finish and go. We have the budget to uh, present to you once again. Uh, made the changes as per your requests uh, from the last time. Those in yellow are the ones affected by the 10% requirement. Uh, you want to just bring everybody on the three C's in under 10%. We did that. Uh, a couple of them actually sent in budgets and adjusted it themselves. Others are budget and finance committee assisted. Um, on the bottom line on 28, is the adjustment for the salary survey versus the COLA, which we originally talked about. Yeah. It's, uh, it's about the million, price estimate yeah. is, about, is 825, actually just a hair less than that, but 825,000. Um, it's like 824, 975, something like that. <laughs> um, also, uh, one of the other recommendations, we moved the small cities out of the economic development into your appropriations at this point for the 160,000. So you'll see that. Uh, and then under the uh, community corrections, that is now just the salary amount appropriate for the appropriation portion that you requested as well. What? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, and there's a concern on that. We have a couple of them that are going to come back up. And, and so, if you want them just, to go ahead, just, go ahead. Just, it's up to the commission. If you yeah. Want to wait oh, until yeah. Everybody's got all this wait. or have departments. You want to wait end. or you want yeah. them to come up now? Or? Go ahead. Right. You know, I think let's hear from them now. Okay. Anybody has questions or changes? Just want to let the commissioners know the reason for the change and where the small cities is. Uh, we just think it's uh, cleaner to take it out of economic, to not fund it out of economic development, have it come out of county general. It gives more flexibility ultimately to the small cities, which is what we want okay. to do. And so we've had some oh, discussions so on help. that. And so just so you know, it's the same dollar amount, but it would come out of general rather than economic, than economic development. Is that going to be one payment then? Straight up, or? we haven't decided that. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, what was it before? Was it? Oh, there it is. That's it. Yeah, was that way? Was it paid one time for? Was it for? You know, no, they get it monthly, just like all yeah. the other. They got the south uh, sales tax distributions, just like we do. Because it comes directly thing, from the state. I've been wondering about that though, and, I, and some of this funding stuff because that's coming out. Does the funds for that come yeah. out? Do we take transfer something out of sales tax right. funds into here to cover that? Because that's what right. that's for. No, that's what we cannot we do. Can't do. We yeah. can't legally yeah. do that. That's it's why a, we have to do this. It's, it's, a, it's a special purpose tax. It's a special purpose tax. So, and rather than a general one, like the existing general half cent that's been in place since the 70s, I think. It doesn't that's have a I, municipal aspect to the tax. So you because we didn't have that. Do. Well, we did. Well, but remember the question itself. And that's the way to think of it. it. Actually, the ballot question said, for this purpose, this is what this levy is going to be for, for uh, basically roads and Road bridges. Bridge. And so it's got to be used for road and bridge. Oh, OK. All right. And, and you doing other well, I know this is for, I know. For, for the county. And so for the county. That, that's for the county. why this change. I would prefer to do it that way myself, but we but you cannot. OK. What? Well, well, these budgets are different things. Yeah. That make it easy. Well, that's I, that's you I would much rather do it that way, but yeah, we cannot. Okay. All right. Oh, no. Good morning, Commission. Anna Burson, Brian County Tracer. Um, I just kind of wanted to speak to one of the things you had mentioned is to cut the budget and then kind of speak to any kind of concerns we had with the cutting that we had to do. Um, one of the biggest areas where um, the budget was increased in our department was in our appraisal services. And the reasoning for that is a dark store, as I had mentioned before. I did go back and I cut in all areas. Um, I did look at historic budgets that Greg had set and historic spending. 
um, as far as you know the subscriptions and some of the different fees that we have to pay year after year. And some of those areas, there was no more room to cut. And as Elizabeth has spoken to, and I'm really glad to hear the Saugus study outcome, um, <clears throat> some of those positions have been a challenge to fill. Well, when there's training, there's loss in dollars and increasing costs with training. And so in addition, I had to, I tried to take the budget up initially for some of those areas. In every area uh, initially where I did take it up, I took it down as far as I could. Um, appraisal services for 2021, we spent 50711 2022, there was only 48000 budgeted. At the end of 2021, the Home Depot case, there was over almost just under $3,000 spent just in the testifying of our appraiser who conducted that fee appraisal. And so that was supposed to cover not just 18, it was supposed to be for 2018 and 2020 at the same time. At the board hearing, they determined to just hear 18. And so I have the concern that if we have to have those testify, the testifying done in each of the cases, what the impact could be. Um, so I, I just wanted to be forthcoming. You know, I, I took it up as far as I could to keep me within that 10% threshold. I took down all of the other areas and took it off as minimally as possible to consider the additional training and what's spent in some of the supplies. I even removed some areas just because they were in there and historically it doesn't look like we've spent in those areas. And so I just, I want to be honest, forthcoming with, you know, yeah, I was able to get it where you wanted it. But in the appraisal services is the biggest concern that I have at this time. How much? How much is that then in there? Because I don't, you know, we don't have your. Um, initially, I had budgeted in appraisal services on the light side. I didn't know how much we'd spent for Kel, uh, for the uh, fee appraiser to testify until digging into this some more. Uh -huh. uh, initially, I had sixty thousand eight hundred fifty budgeted for the appraisal services just to, to provide some a little bit more of a cushion in that area. Like I said, 50,711 was spent in 21. Um, I got it down to 52.5. That's, that's not much wiggle room, but it, um, you know, it's still taking it up some. And so just wanted to- Okay, well, actually, I just want to- Sure. Thank you. Chase that fly over He's here. Right Perfect. Yeah, oh, you know. I was hiding on buddies over there. <laughs> well, don't show him this door. <laughs> Send yeah. it back towards Rich. It is. Yeah, we don't like the <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I think I've read it rather than any corrections. Just something that we noticed on uh, on Daryl's presentation as well is that historically we've received 7,081 in appropriations every year for um, sublimiting agency operations for um, training purposes. Um, we um, have 52.521 as our proposed budget for 2023, and that was just to include those increased personnel costs. It didn't include that 7,081 that we have historically received. So ideally, um, we would do that 52.521 and 781 appropriations we received together for a total of 59,602. Make sure I've explained that correctly, or was it say something additional? And the only thing I would add is the original request was for 69,000. Mm -hmm. So um, it, there is has been a significant decrease, um, even if even if you do decide to include that seven thousand dollars, what you should or should. But, but the seven wasn't in that original sixty-nine. The seven was so six, was. sixty-nine thousand dollars was the original request. That the, included the, the seven thousand. Okay. Yes, and the increase in personnel is that fifty-two thousand. That's only the increase in personnel. Okay. So this it does not currently include about seven thousand dollars, and that was a concern. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's the election soon. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> we'll budget in one flight order. Okay. Might be able to do that. <laughs> Just say, as long as you don't use it on each other. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Well, that's what that concrete well, that post. Means for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I've got a brick in here. You, oh. It's on your forehead. You want to try? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll probably end up in Elizabeth's office, but that's okay. Yeah, you are elected official, but I think there's a personnel issue involved here. <laughs> the, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> that's that's not really. Right? It's more law enforcement. Nothing else. It's more law enforcement. Law enforcement. <laughs> Uh, we'll find a different use to the break. Right now, we're at a 0.049 reduction in your mill levy. 
So you're wanting to do it flat. That's pretty darn flat. <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to be sure if there's any other department heads that wanted to have anything. Yeah. Please feel free to max so the yeah. reduction. Now is the yeah. time to do it. Right. Uh, yes, I'm looking at you. I know. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Well, I haven't looked at where that was coming from, but I can probably guarantee you the increases, my big increases were asphalt overlay mm -hmm. and fuel. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first place we'll go was the increase I had in the asphalt overlay. Um, I still have the ability to use some of sales tax for the overlay. I will probably reduce that some more. Okay. Um, if not, back down to 1.2 million from the 1.5 I requested. Um, and then the other is fuel. Um, cross my fingers and toes and everything else. <laughs> though, the prices come down for next year, that will be okay. Um, and there's some other options that we can do with uh, the, the sales from what we we sell to the real fire our RCPD. Um, put that back into where make that them dollars more available if we have to um, as the budget runs short for uh, next year. So I will take that down, but I'm not sure whatever that is to get me down to the 10%. Um, otherwise, we're cutting services and we're going to reduce days that we can run a truck or a motor grader um, just to keep from going over fuel. Okay. <clears throat> Those were two, the two significant areas we cut in his area mm -hmm. was gas because we went up. Uh, 250 percent, I think. 350,000 uh, on the fuel side. Mm -hmm. uh, now, well over 700 or, because gas prices and diesel have gone up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, there are those adjustments. Uh, we also have given you the uh, fire district one budget. Oh no, <laughs> starting with the economic development fund one. Yeah. Uh, and the adjustment we made in there, taking out the 160, plus we added in a comprehensive plan update for 50,000. Uh, that was out of planning department. That was one that's coming on that we know is coming on and it is in economic development. Well, it looks like we saved the yeah. 50 000 US 24 and just transferred it yeah. over. And what is that cost? Why is it 50,000 when it's, it should be in the planning department, I would think. Is that outside or? Typically when these studies are done before they were in economic development with previous planning department directors and Amanda did broach the subject with the commissioners mm -hmm. during your presentation. It had just never been placed within her budget. So it's not doubled up, it is not in her budget. And so. Right. That's why it was placed in here. You're free to take it out. Um, generally, special cap larger projects are are either in CIP or Economic Development Fund. You guys can place and it. The reality on. there is if we take it out of there, then it's going to have to be in her budget. Right? So, the, yeah, the 50000 is going to have to be come somewhere. up somewhere. So, is that are those outside agencies that takes up the $50,000? Yeah, it's a consultant. A consultant yeah, yeah, I know you discussed yeah, consultant. Yeah, over 23 and 24. So it's not just the one for the year. So for those two, not, not 100, okay. Well, 50 for okay, so should it just not be $25,000 this year and then we do $25,000 next year? That's 25. I apologize, I didn't know that's how it was done. So. Let's do it year to year on that. Yeah. So we'll do it 25 and then. Will 25 be enough for the first year, you believe? Um, it's hard to know until I, of course, go out for my RFQ to know what somebody will be able to do for us. Um, but you're not going to be in the full fledged part of that next year anyway, right? Right. Right. So yeah. if we needed to add more than $25,000 to cover that next year's budget, that seem fair? Or? It's it's so tough to know again because so I guess 
the whole project would be the intent would be of course the 50k for a consultant so i guess i could still put it out that way but like you just said i could only spend 25k each year mm -hmm. so just have to negotiate that or figure that out with a consultant 25 works for me. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. You got that. We didn't do any other cuts in then, the outside <laughs> agency. So I thought we were talking about maybe I'd, doing across the board or something. Well, that there's two different. There's one at appropriations, and then the one no, at economic development. Economic development. Okay. This, this but we have a whole section of those outside that are appropriations separately. Yeah. Right. Economic development. So, yeah. So are you talking just economic I was development? At the economic oh, okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I knew where you were. Well, it could be the others too. I mean, we're talking about you know, if we made any cuts, it would have to be across the board. Well, I also was going to mention one thing too. The seventy with the seven thousand and some change that they're short of community corrections could also be made up in that other twenty-five that we just cut to. Mm -hmm. We want to go that route as well. As much so, as we can cut out. Yeah. So yeah, we need to know from the commission if they want to add that seventy-eight oh one. Is that what it was? Seven thousand eighty-one. Seven thousand eighty-one back to the community corrections appropriation. I'd say keep that one adjusted flat, and then the rest of it's for personnel. We already decided to do that. I don't yeah. think that's fair to then just yeah, undecide it. Right. So that keeps that one square and saves us whatever that is, eighteen thousand, nineteen thousand. Not much, but the ACA will lock into that. Yeah, and we at 35. 35%. You mean 32? 35 is extension. 35%, it says on number 31. Oh, I'm back. 31 is 8. 31 is 8. 32. <laughs> But we took the thirty-five thousand back out and kept it flat. They yes. asked for one thirty-five, and last year's was one hundred. So we, we cut, cut them, them back. already. Yeah, yeah it is one hundred. Yeah, yeah, we were cut it back. But it was a they originally asked for one hundred and thirty-five. Correct. 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 And now so we're that at, one we already now did we're at one hundred on that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that is originally. You have to compare it to the last one because they took it off already. Two. Oh, there it is. Okay, I see it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, those are all zero except for extension, which was six percent. And oh, uh, where's the community corrections? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I see. Well, it. Aging, I'm sorry, I was well, looking aging, at the last. Yeah, they have more. We took more. Okay. Yeah, and then there were right. several of them. We did that. Previous because we just said flat and they asked for two, five, twelve. Right. We just left everybody really right. zero. This extension they haven't changed. They did. They, they did. came down from twelve to six per our request. Right. And I have show you have their new budget attached further down. <laughs> and see they brought our portion of the request to six hundred and thirty-five thousand six hundred dollars. And this is their new one in case you want to approve that portion as well. We have that. Do we have the 10 days again now? Yes, from the time this was submitted. There's a 10 day period. Figured it out. 
I'm sorry, but on something else, I was looking at these numbers. Just, yeah. just a reminder, several pages of them. Just a yeah. reminder of the board, you do have the 10 days on the extension, yeah, but our yeah. other limiting factor is the R and R has been day. given to me by the 20th of July. So that's Monday. not real. That's on Monday. Okay. Deadline. On the salaries and wages on the extension, they didn't. Isn't that their state employees? Correct. No, or they are. They're, 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 they're not on our payroll system. They're on our payroll system. We're showing five hundred ninety thousand for salaries. They are. Mm -hmm. No extension. 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 They're not on our payroll extension system. Extension is not on our. No. Payroll. Uh, that's payroll. what I thought. But I don't believe they're state employees either. Well, I'm saying it the wrong wrong way. I used the term payroll system, but the, the deal is, but we're paid. The state pays their benefits. Isn't that no? State pays for everything. I mean, we don't. No, we they don't get a check from the state. We do not cut them a check. We do not hire them. Right. right. Well, why is this five hundred ninety thousand plus benefits still in this? That's their that's, overall extension. Budget. Yeah, that's okay. their overall that's budget. Not, you have to go down and look where it says cap, um, county. It's up, I guess. Sorry. They do not follow our personnel policies. They just use the space. It says down there in receipts, county appropriations. That's the dollar amount that's on our line. Yeah. And that came down from, let's say it was 670 something. Well, it was higher than that because it was 12% at one point. State isn't giving them enough to pay their salaries. I mean, well, so we're not paying them out of our payroll, but we are paying them. That's what they use some of our funds for. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And they're on um, fiscal year too. And does that cause yeah. disparity? They were at. Basically, yep. at six hundred thousand last year, five hundred ninety-nine. Yeah, six forty-five. I'm okay with the six um, there. Um, Thirty-five thousand six hundred increase based per six percent. Six percent increase. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I had asked Gary when he presented what percent of his increase was due to personnel. Didn't he say ten? He said ten out of yeah. the twelve. Okay. So, that's right. Yeah. 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 And I just, I just figured in that discussion, yes, they're not county employees, but they do a lot of county related activities, and that seemed like that seemed like a fair balance in the in the equation. Okay. All right, that answers that. And I believe he's, I, I believe he's right. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're, they're not. Case. They're not state employees. Not state, case. Yeah. Well, but K State's employees yes. are state employees. Yes, but so. they would have to follow all the policies. Right. right. The funding is employees. that, but they they are they would have to follow the policies and then the pay increase of the K State right. implements. Right. Yeah. I don't think K State, I don't think state employees there got much this year. I think they got a two percent. Yeah, two percent. They got their and they were different. talking about maybe then, another one so and a half. Potentially. But. And they did yeah. they'll get their like their merit, whatever they do for merit, mm -hmm. but their two percent is their well if they approve it, because yeah. that's approved separately. Yeah. Yeah. Their, their, region. their step, their pull of the, everything separately. Right. And that's done coordination with border regions to the legislature, right? Or no. Well, actually, I think K-State, KU, and a couple of the others are actually given a, this is your dollars. Okay. And then they allocate it. And then they allocate it. Up to yeah. Oh. I mean, they pretty well follow the state guidelines. Mm -hmm. But I think anymore, about 10 years ago, they went to a dollar allocation. Okay. Maybe a little bit that. That's how it's been explained as well. They like everybody else likes to be union. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the commerce in this of yeah. government or public sector sometimes. It's all intertwined, but it doesn't intertwine neatly. I want to ask it also added on to this. Sorry, can't talk to you. Uh, the rural fire district number one fund, which also has an R and R that you have to approve and uh, attach to example uh r and r's to that uh, to this as well what they'll look like these are directly from the uh, state website uh, i know the ones you had last year were the tammies were nicer they were more of a letter and well they didn't really have three. one from the state if i remember right just yet we were right. kind of still trying to figure all that out yeah 
how to actually provide a form. Mm -hmm. so, you know, but just wanted you to see what the you know the form itself because mm -hmm. it sounds like we're going to have a couple adjustments and probably go over this again on Monday. But because the, I have to give it to him for five o'clock. And on just Wednesday. so the commissioners are clear, because sometimes it's confusing. You are the ultimate authority on the fire district as well, so just yeah. you don't have to adopt what is presented, but. Of course, Russell is here to address any concerns you have because ultimately they are a separate tax and entity, but you are the head of that tax. I did notice on both of those you have the, the time listed as the same. They do have to be separate hearings, correct? At different times. They're both listed yeah. at 955 on there. Yeah. So they have just to... listed separate on the agenda at the same date, just you know, 10 minutes after each other or five right. minutes or whatever. Right. But you don't have to, you don't, you need to list the exact time for each one of them, correct? They're both listed at the time. Same and time. location. Right. Right. So just when you do. I'll do that five minute okay. break. I'd still like to see that come down a little bit, Russell, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think we're going to get close to a revenue neutral rate on that one either, but would like to see it come down a little bit more. Well, I think his mills went up from 8.2 to 9.6 on that. I know yours is probably fuel related, mostly probably yeah. too. So fuel tires, yeah. tires all the equipment, more expensive parts. Yeah, so on the budget, well, on your the uh, there was some equipment and of 130 went up slightly, but what it has been in the past. Also went up on tools, which I'm sure he's got some replacement of <laughs> shovels, whatever, to go out and take care of a fire. And then it actually did go up as high as I expected on fuel lubricants. Yeah, which I don't know how that's the adjustment you want to make on this one. Time is of the essence as well. Yeah, what's the other one? Well, you can go ahead and list it. You can go ahead and list it now and then come down. You just can't go over. So you know, correct. That's kind of that's kind of what I was inferring. Because <clears throat> what's the other capital outlay on third down third bottom of this list? So went from ten to fifty or ten to sixty. So that would be like firefighting equipment, like large generators and the jaws of life, the large purchases that, that are not, you know, a hundred dollar wrench or, you know, uh, 20, 10, 20, 30, 40,000 pieces of equipment that we might buy with that stuff. So. A uh, thermal imaging camera or generator, jaws of life, or larger items like that. But you, um, okay. But you have several other, several other funds that you can pull some of that from. Not each and every one of them, correct? Isn't so, that the amount you're recommending be transferred from this fund to your real <coughs> fire capital outlay fund? Capital outlay is six line six or four mm -hmm. thirty thousand. Yeah. And then anything we have left over. So if I don't spend any of that at the end of the year, then we'll transfer any leftover funds to our capital outlay. So. We count on having money left and the other funds to be able to transfer more to capital outlay instead of budgeting those so tight, putting more budget dollars in the capital outlay transfer. We count on having, you know, whatever, but if we have a bad fire year and we go like crazy and we go to 60,000 on fuel instead of 40,000 and ruin, you know, 10 or 20. Two to seven hundred dollar tire, <coughs> so we aren't going to have extra money to put to the capital outlay. So that's just the, how we try to fund, get the capital outlay fund increase. You know, just thirty thousand as you know a year for capital outlay for fire trucks that cost fifty to hundred to two hundred thousand dollars for a good use when thirty thousand dollars doesn't get up. What's your balance for your rural file capital outlay fund? Approximately. Two to three hundred thousand, three. I think it's around three hundred right now. Oh. And we're also trying to sock money away to have more cash for these fire stations that yeah. need to be built that we're waiting on. You know, we're 
So it's almost like CRT account. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. That's what that is. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, correct. The real fire district isn't eligible for CI for the county general right. CIP, so we don't right. have to do our own CIP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's how we try to build up essentially our CIP from this. And that's important to recognize this only impacts the rural residents mm -hmm. outside the city of City of Manhattan, City of the Special Class. Yeah, they're the ones that get assessed this taxation. Right. Do commissioners have any recommendations on any adjustments now on rural fire? We'll proceed as is. So go ahead and leave it where it's at. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> uh, any other adjustments on the major budget itself? Yeah, I'd like to see us go back and look at the RCPD building fund potentially. It was reduced some, wasn't it, gentlemen? Yeah. Yeah, 290 per month. And I just like to see us try to make up that nine percent difference there a little bit, a little bit more accurately. And we we can do that, Commissioner. Just so you know, <clears throat> this isn't money we give RCP to do with that they want. We still sure. administer yeah. that, and so just so you know, we can reduce it. But if costs come in more and we have to pay for it, we're going to have to come up with the money somewhere, and that then comes out of the general fund. So I, I understand your point, but. The whole point is to is with all the department's budget as accurately as possible and still be able to you know address the needs that are there. So in the meantime, um I think it's still a good conversation to have there. Um we basically have three motions we need to make here, correct? Something on the extension budget and the two R and Rs, is that correct? No. Uh, You've already got changes on the one R and R on the uh, the general. Okay. So, we'll so on Monday, the Monday, Monday, we'll we'll do the drop on Monday. Monday. If okay. you want to do, I mean, because we don't have an accurate total right now, without adding a seventy seven thousand eighty one and taking off the taking off twenty five. Okay. Right. It's only like eighteen thousand dollars. But it'll make a small adjustment though. Then I guess that leaves at the moment getting back to Catherine's question on if we want to make some. Cuts across the outside agencies, appropriations, and then economic development. Of course, uh, I don't know if there's anything on John's end as far as his cuts as well. You said you were looking at a couple other ones as well. Yeah, probably most of it's probably going to be fuel and gas oil. But I think he was talking more about reallocating some of that to the sales tax. Well. The sales tax already allows me to use about two hundred fifty thousand for overlay fund. So that'd be good, right? Okay. I mean, that's where he's talking about some of this asphalt and stuff like that. Well, I mean, yeah. going into next year, we're going to have some overage from the last sales tax that could be right transfer over to that. So that'd be good. You said two hundred fifty thousand. Or up, up to a year, yes. Okay. I think the newer set is like this. Uh, more than the same one. Yeah, but it's considered the same type of project. Was that a 250000 reduction? <coughs> Out of his? No, it wasn't that much of a reduction. I didn't think so. Okay. It was at least that much of his fuel, though. So I could reallocate into his fuel from asphalt. Gotcha. That's probably. I mean, those are just line item pieces. <laughs> Can maybe roll out maybe 50 grand out of that, maybe? What do you think? I'm just nitpicking, I guess. <laughs> where, where was it up front? Well, he's reallocating some monies that he can use for sales tax 
for overlay, but wants to reallocate them for fuel budget and a few other things, which given the uncertainty makes sense. <clears throat> well, I mean, if that dollar amount that you want but to get me down to that 10%, I'll figure out which line I want to take it out. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think the important thing is you have a a bottom line budget number for my three C's that I'll work with them and I'll make do. I don't know if you need to worry, if, unless you want to worry about what line items are my budget to come from. Mm -hmm. It looks like here you're under 10% already, right? Yeah, he's at 9.96. I mean, because it's pretty hard within $100 yeah. to yeah, make it exact 10%. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. <clears throat> You've already approved the study, but you, you know you haven't really approved whether we're doing the cold or the. No. So well, I I'm mean, assuming they, you're doing the study. They, they really here. did. They made a motion yeah. to adopt the salary study, so that decision's been made. So we're okay. We're good there. Yeah. Good. You know, that I think we're covered on the personnel side <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, what other cuts we're going to make? I guess. Is, Unless you wanted to take large chunks or something at a CIP, I mean, that's really I feel like they're not. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 So that's really the only thing I'd caution you on is what you're seeing. Less, less mm -hmm. car purchase for a vehicle and everything else that David and Russell and John see. I mean, those, those are the ones that take up the bulk of our CIP. I'm not picking on them, it's just. Year in and year out, they have the most expensive items on there. Those items are not getting any less no, expensive. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. trying to be and mindful. We're gonna, of that. I'm going to need to come forward with one as soon as we have a CIP session. You know, the we talked about early this year, you know, because they're, they're two years out. So, and this the one we received this year was meant to replace something that's not, it's adding to. So, Well, we do have another work session on Monday, so we don't mm -hmm. have to don't have to have it all figured out today. But I think we got the bulk of what we need to take care of taken care of. So, and Daryl will get these adjustments made and have the updated spreadsheet in your okay. packet. All right. <laughs> Those are keep it separate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had it separate. Really. Yeah. I think the reality from my point is we're not going to get to that R and R rate. Just, I mean, it went, it went down two mils from 41 and something last year already. It was just inevitable there. So I don't, regardless of what other cuts we make between now and whenever, I don't think they're going to make up that difference to get to we're that. Not going to get the R and R. I mean, no. I was hoping just to be able to get it to flat. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of was my thought too. So that was our direction from the last meeting. So yeah. yeah, that was. I mean, we can. When I say we, the plan yeah. plan committee, but the department heads overall, as you can see, right. stepped up. And we can still have a couple other work and sessions as you go through that R and R process and reduce minimal. I mean, if we want to go that route, but I mean, if we're not going to get past it. I don't see why we need to wait till Monday to decide that. I think with your rate inflation and stuff like that. You're not going to get your no. R and R by any means. No. So yeah, you're. And by I just, I just say we wait, wait till Monday that way you guys have accurate numbers. Okay. And do we want to? Are we okay with the extension budget so we can give them their ten days? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, there's not another ten days for yeah. If, it if stops you accept here, it, then it's done. Accept, oh, okay. Yeah. Then it's done. Um, I can accept that. So. Yeah, I, they made the adjustments we have asked for. I think we did. I'll make a motion to do so. I'll make a motion that we go ahead and set the 2023 Rally County Extension uh, budget as um, listed. I would second that. And moved and seconded to approve the <coughs> Rally County Extension budget as presented. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Okay, anything else on the budget itself then? I'm gonna look over where we're at a little bit more extensively over the weekend. So I may have something on Monday. I may not. Okay. 
Don't okay. email me. In. You can do that. Make adjustments on. If you turn that extending now. I will. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Yeah. 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 You have a few minutes. Uh, we'll need to I've start. got a new lunch across the way, but okay. you print that out and have them sign it. Yes. But that's not that. You can say that. You can tell me. Right. Yes. It's based on the Right. The extension, but what about it? Oh, oh there's no. a sign off sheet for the commissioners. Okay. Get to do that today. We'll do it Monday. Monday's fine. Yeah, Daryl, just just get on the business meeting on Monday. That I'm sorry, got okay. The extension, the extension. Yeah, they all get assigned on people. the business meeting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Can, you. you can sure send them an email to tell them what they can refer to as a revised budget. They'll be pretty right. tied up with the fair next week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they will. <laughs> Or it's probably moving out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. 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 You just look quick ahead of time. Like, please. Out. Yeah, please. Yeah. I guess the last thing we need to do then is make a motion that we adjourn the, uh, what day are we on? <laughs> <laughs> July 14th, 2022 meeting of the Riley County Commission. I would second that. I move to second it to adjourn.